Oh yeah. All right, you know, the set may look different, but the dancing remains. Today is a very special day. You're like, where are y'all? We are on the live set. I got some hot guests, I'm not going to lie. I'm bringing it. Ladies, you're welcome, is all I'm going to say. I have Justin Waller here. You know him. He's been on with me a bunch, well, one time, actually. But I feel like we've, we've known each other forever in an odd way. Yeah, Maybe for sure. You know what it is? It's the cowboy gene. I think I just... It's the, it is it's the cow cowboy it is the cowboy thing. <laughs> it's just and, and and uh, Buck Sexton. There you so, go. And Buck Sexton, yeah, we have a mutual friend, which yeah. I did not realize. I've got Sterling Cooper, who is such a badass. By the way, his Twitter. Y'all stop what you're doing right now and go follow him on Twitter. It is amazing. You're and I actually you? pulled some of your tweets. Oh great! This is gonna oh, be fantastic. Oh yeah, this is gonna be fantastic. Oh boy, I wasn't ready for that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. So we have both these guys in the house today. Um, I'm gonna tell you what we're gonna be talking about. And then I'm going to, I have to plug something of my own, but here's what we're going to do today. We're going to discuss the death of masculinity. We're going to discuss the role of biology in male versus female preferences. We're going to dig into the Vice hit piece on Andrew Tate because we all know it was a hit piece. We all know it was propaganda. We all know it was garbage. But Sterling was actually there. And Justin has been to a number of war room events. So we're going to dig into what they lied about and why they lied. What was the motivation of this whole thing? We're going to talk about what actually goes on at the War Room events. Like, what's the real story that Vice didn't want you to know? We'll dig into that. I have, I have to ask Sterling for some bedroom tips for men. i got to do a favor for the guys out there and get some of those tips. Well, I'll, obviously, i got to dig into a little of your background, too, and, right and figure out how it fits oh, into the book. whole red... I'm, I'm a little confused about a couple of things, but you're going to help me out. Oh, we're going to get there. I love that we're going to do this, actually. Yes, we <laughs> are. And we also <laughs> have social much. media content for you both to react to. I've got some social media content that digs into the topic one, which I want to talk about, which is the increasing number of feminized men and masculinized women and why that's deeply a problem. So there are some funny tweets that we're going to show. Everyone at home... Um, I know you know Manect. Um, I've plugged that a bunch of times. But I also have another space. It's Locals. It's Beela.Locals.com. Locals is uh, under the umbrella of Rumble. I know some of y'all love Rumble. We're over on Rumble as well. But this is a page where you can support me. You can become a free supporter. Come on over. Get some free extra content. I do some behind the scenes stuff related to this show, not related to this show. Oh, stuff at home, need to vent, stuff related to health and wellness, related to family, whatever it may be. Or you can become a supporter. You can spend as little as five bucks a month. Whatever you want to do, that is a space that I have so that I can guarantee you that this free speech movement carries on and that I bring you the very best of what I can every minute of every day. And there's also some side projects I'm thinking about doing, so that helps to fund all of that stuff. If you're already on the page, awesome. If you're not, just go over, check it out. If you don't like it, that's cool. You love it, stay and party. It's feisty is all I'm going to say. All right, guys, I'm back to you now. So Justin's channel, in case you didn't know, of course you know, Jay Waller, Gentleman's Guide to Become an Abundant Man. I like that word abundant that you used, by the way. I like it. It's like, it's fruit, it sounds important. fruitful. It's got to be that way. So let me ask you, and then we have Sterling's page, which is, it says world's number one sex coach for men, which I love, which I'm sure you got a lot of tips. True. You have a lot of experience in it the area, true. I'm told. So I'm sure you're going to have a lot to offer. So I want to start with this. I want to start with a topic that's near and dear to my heart. People ask me why I do this and why I talk so, many, so much about men's issues. And I have a three-year-old son, and I know you know that. But it's deeply concerning to me that he's growing up in a world where men are repeatedly and consistently you know, told they're the bad guys, their masculinity is toxic. I don't want that world for him. I'm going to fight to make sure that that world changes. Or I'm going to surround him with a bunch of badasses like you guys so that he grows up with a good head on his shoulders and turns into a warrior. Why do you think, I ask, there are increasingly a number of, you look around and you see feminized guys completely, I mean, I, I, the grocery, as an example, I went to the grocery store the other day. And I see a couple walk in, very clear that they're married. The guy has the energy of a little boy. Okay, he's walking behind his wife. He, I'm not talking about like no lines in his face. You knew he was an adult male, but he had the energy of a small child. And he's walking behind a woman who had the energy of a boss babe. And she was just, you could tell right off the bat, running the show, this, that, and the other thing. Why is that happening? I want to get to the why, and then I want to get to the how do we fix it. Sterling, I'm going to start with you. Why do you think that's the case? Because we live in a world with inverted values now. Explain. Well, we encourage masculinity in women, and we encourage femininity in men. Right, Up is down, down is up. We encourage people to be victims. We encourage virtue signaling. 
and I say we as in not us individually, but the society we currently live in is pushing these inverted values. We used to push, we used to build statues of people who did glorious things. Mm -hmm. Now you get, you know, paraded around the news for being a victim and celebrated for being a victim. So that's an inversion of values. It's an inversion of the traditional values that built the Western world. Mm -hmm. So that's, that is the base root of all of this, is flipping things on its head. And we can get to how to fix it. I think a large part of what we try to do is try to fix that, but mm -hmm. This has been going on for, you know, this hasn't happened in like the last four years. This has been a slow progression over the last like 30, 40, 50 years. Decades now. Justin, why do you think guys, why do guys go along with it though? It always bothers me that guys, I think that's, I think you're 100% right. I agree completely with what you just said, Sterling. But why, why don't you see pushback from men? Like, are they so programmed? Have they been so weakened that their natural instincts to say, hold up, is that dead too? Because that's scary. I personally think it's a mating strategy. If, if you say that 10% of men sleep with 95% of the women, then what is the what does that got to do to act like he's on their side in that way? But the problem is, is that over time that she's going to lose respect for him. My question is, why is he in the fucking grocery store in the first place? So wait a second. You think it's a, before we get to the grocery store, you think it's a mating strategy that those guys think they're going to appeal to women. Absolutely. 100%. By becoming. 100%. But use monogamy. They, like, use monogamy. A man is a man will give up monogamy to lock down one woman when you know at deeply, deeply in his core his primal need is not to do that, and he gives that up. Well, there could be a number of reasons. We had that debate. Actually. We have we had, had that debate. Had it, or so uh, use use anything though. Right. Use anything though. Like the the way the house is decorated, for example. Mm. You know, good good goddamn and well, he doesn't want the house decorated with teal blue, pink pillows all yeah, over and, the. And all that, yeah, but but he gives in. Who bought the damn house? More than likely, he did. More than likely, mm. a lot of men are breadwinners in the house, but they don't wear the pants. So I think it's a mating strategy all the way around. But it's unattractive. Of course so it's unattractive. So this, this is the problem, because men are doing this because they think, and that may be true, there may be some component of men that feel like, okay, this is going to help me to get a wife, to keep a wife. Yeah, happy you know, wife, happy life. Happy wife, happy yeah, life. Yeah, yeah. Make sure the queen is happy, all that. Don't upset the queen, I always say. But those women are constantly distracted by guys who aren't like that by guys who are masculine, who guys, by guys who do give a little bit of pushback. Of course, you know, women want to be respected, but right. they also want a man to respect themselves and not be a pushover. So that gets lost at some point. Like at some point, there are guys, and, and I don't know, maybe you can speak to this because you guys, you know, we can get into the war room and all that, but what is the fix then? Is it, what do you do? Say you're both involved in the war room pretty heavily, and we're going to get to what goes on behind the scenes, but... A guy comes to you, Sterling, I'll go to you first, but I want to hear from both of you on this. A guy comes to you and says, this is my reality, I'm unhappy. Shares with you details about his relationship. Maybe he is the guy that's a pushover in his house. Maybe he feels like that is the way he's going to keep his wife. Maybe he's afraid to upset that balance for fear that she'll walk away, whatever. How do you kind of get that guy to shake him, re reignite his masculinity, and get him on the right path to his own happiness, which he's going to need, in order to create a happy dynamic in his house. I don't think he's going to have, have a happy dynamic in his house unless he has any kind of abundance in his life. What right? does that mean? He abundance? has to have, a, have, have abundance in the three main areas of your life, health, wealth, relationships, right? Does he have his health in order? Okay, if he doesn't have his health in order, he's not going to feel happy in general. He's not going to execute. Does he have his finances in order? If he doesn't have his finances in order, well, he's going to feel insecure around his woman. He can't provide for her. Does he have abundance in relationships? If he doesn't have a brotherhood, as in other men he can go to, for advice, mm -hmm. for, for, for camaraderie. And if he relies on his woman as his sole source of companionship, then he's in deep shit. Mm -hmm. that's, well, that's why we talk about having brotherhood and the importance of brotherhood. Is because mm -hmm. if men only have their woman to go to for that kind of companionship, well, and they don't have guys they can hang out with who align with their worldview, well, then that abundance mentality he needs to bring to a relationship to keep it healthy is gone, right? And now you can also talk about abundance with women. If he's the kind of guy that is attractive to other women, okay, that's, that's generally gonna keep her happy. Right. She's, gonna, she's gonna be looking up to this guy if he's the kind of man who can, who if he wanted to, doesn't mean he has to, but if he wanted to, he could actually step out and cheat. If he's the guy who has that capacity. He's desirable. He's desirable. And then mm -hmm. no one wants to be with a man that no woman <laughs> wants. 
Yeah. They, every woman wants to be with a guy who other women look up to and, and want to chase after. I hear from women, um, not women that support my content, but I'll hear get messages, nasty messages. You know, I would never send my, what are they, are they talking to me? I don't know what you're doing. What are you saying? You need to send me a message, guys? You can say it. You can say it. What's up? Oh, my microphone down. You can talk. Don't worry about it. It's all good. They get so, they get so worried about professionalism. They get worried about, but okay. You're blocking your pretty face. You need to it's move it. It's all good. It. Yeah. It's all it. good. Don't worry about it. Um, I hear from women sometimes, feisty, don't like the content, whatever it may be, and they'll say, I would never want my guy to go hang out with those guys. That's a bad influence. He's going to learn all bad things. He's going to come home. He's not going to want to be in a relationship He's anymore. He's going to learn to respect himself, heaven forbid. What do you, I mean, what is your message to those? I mean, that would not be a concern of mine at all. And like, you know, you and I have had that conversation about monogamy. I'm in a monog monogamous relationship. I, it wouldn't occur to me that my relationship or my situation would in any way be in jeopardy by my husband forging a relationship with men who really care about male self-improvement. Like that, that would not occur to me. Why do you think it occurs to some of these women? I think generally women don't know what they want. I can't tell you how many times I've sat down with a woman and, the, and we started off the conversation, she was a feminist, and she left with traditional values. Like, it's very, very important if you're a man to stick firm to how you believe the situation should go. And I think guys will be shocked that if you can hold that frame with a woman, she will absolutely be much happier than she ever would have been if you kissed her ass. Yeah. A thousand percent. And I think the war room is mostly about that. Everything that he just said, like there's, there's what we call sigils in the war room where we talk about your health, your fitness, you know, finance. Nowhere in there is anybody saying anything about game. You know, right. if you are that guy and you can hold your frame correctly, then she has no problem. There should be a gap. She should look up to you. And, and if you allow the relationship between you and her to get to hear, or you argue with her, or you let her nag at you and all these things, then there is, <laughs> there is no hierarchy in the relationship. So it, without a hierarchy in the relationship, if she can't truly look up to you and believe that she is better because of you, the relationship's going to fail because she's going to lose respect for you. And as you know, and we always talk about in the war room, if she can't respect you, she cannot love you. Can you speak to, though, because there will be people who will hear that, mm -hmm. and they'll say, that doesn't sound like a situation of mutual respect. That's not me. I'm playing devil's advocate right. here. But if they say, that's not, that doesn't sound respectful, I always say, I, I don't hear it that way. I don't hear you guys saying disrespect women. Absolutely I hear you not. guys saying men and women are different. Men yep. and women play different roles. Men and women you know, complement each other. It's just different. The reality is guys... Guys are different, and, and what women expect and want from men is not what men expect and want from women. So that's what I hear you saying. Yeah. But that's not how it's received by people who are programmed to be triggered by what you just said. So all they heard was, "Oh, he's saying that you know, a woman is less than. She's weak. She needs to you know always. She needs." They, they imagine it as that scene. I don't know if you saw in the Vice documentary with Iggy Semmelweis where they have that scene of the woman uh, bowing. Yeah. You mean his wife? Yeah, his, that's wife his wife, right? Yeah. But they who, who loves him very much, and he and loves I, very much, right? And I, right. I said that on the show. I said, you know, I did, I did some digging, and I was like, they've been married for ten years together, fifteen years. Right. But that is the image that they want. They want people to hear the names Andrew Tate, Sterling Cooper, Justin Waller, and walk away feeling that you guys are trying to subjugate women. Well, how about this just simple statistic? How long is the average marriage? Because fifteen years, and they're still happy, is pretty mm -hmm. damn impressive to me. Yeah. There's you know. something that they're doing that's correct right. for them to have that success. Yeah, compared to what's going on now with most people where they're married a couple of years, everybody's unhappy, straying, right. looking here, doing whatever. Yeah. So, yeah. So, Just and look what, at the, res like, look at the results. You know, yeah. like, to me, that's, uh, look at the, the results. results. The actual like, results. Who is happier, genuinely? Is you know, Iggy and his wife happier than the average American couple? I would yes. say unequivocally by yes, by far. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So p people seem to be blind to the reality of what they can see with their own eyes now. It baffles me. Mm -hmm. How can you look at the world around you and think that it adheres to your warped worldview when the results clearly say it doesn't? It's programming. Yeah. Bingo. People have been programmed. I mean, and even, you know, me, someone who I say I'm very open with the audience about, you know, I'm a conservative. I'm somebody who, you know, grew up defending men. I didn't like what I saw about how, you know, even through the Kavanaugh trials, I don't know how much you follow with politics. I always reference that this guy was just brutalized, criminalized on second one. But even I had to catch myself and kind of acknowledge that I have been programmed to have a certain reaction to things. And it really takes a certain type of person to sit back and say, what do I really feel about this? And, and kind of, you really have to deprogram a lot of your inclinations. Um, it's interesting, the sartorial shooter has 
there's a, a line in the documentary where he's in the car, he's interviewed, and he says, he uses the phrase, my woman. And he's referencing Andrew Tate, and he says something to the effect of how, like, Tate would take care of his women or something. And, and the guy in the car, Matt Shea, I guess we could say guy, although I think maybe, I don't know, he looked like he had, like, one ball to me most of the time. But regardless, <laughs> that guy, no joke, especially when they were like, oh, have you ever been in a boxing ring? And he's like, no. I mean, you grown-ass man, you've never been in a boxing ring? Ever? I've been in a boxing ring to, to, you know, in church street boxing. Like, I'm not a fighter, but I did it for fitness. You've never been in a boxing ring? Grown-ass man, there's something wrong. So, the, but the phrase, my woman, triggered him. Mm. And I went on the show, and I was like, if you really are into a guy, you love that he says, my woman. Like, why have women lost touch with just that but, reality? But look at that situation. I mean, Satorio's really close friends with us. Uh, he, he's what, 6'4", six, 6'5"? Six, at least. Is yeah. he that tall? He's yeah. a giant. Of a he, he's a huge, <laughs> why is successful, everyone a giant? <gasps> competent, well-dressed, yeah. in-charge man. Yeah. Of course that little coward wants to come at him. Mm -hmm. Of course he does, because that's his strategy, because he can't compete with Satorio. Mm -hmm. So he has to go and, and, and virtue signal to other women, mm -hmm. like, how dare you say that? Let me stand up for women. Yep. Newsflash, buddy, it's not going to work. If him and Satorio walk in the same room, every woman would rather be with Satorio than get 100% of his affection, mm -hmm. whoever that little clown is. Who is the little kid? Matt Shea. Shea. Yeah, fuck that dude. I want to ask you about biology. He's I a had rat. A so yeah, no, he is. We'll get to bite. He's a rat. He's lucky he's stored it and bitch slap him. He he's he's a snake. And I said it. We'll get to we'll get to some of that commentary about Vice because what's been odd, what's been interesting and odd to me at the same time though, is I, I can't figure out why they even let him in, to be honest. Now I, and I know I saw the commentary where Andrew was like, What is he gonna do to me? You know, what's he gonna do? I think there was some of that feeling of like, this is who I am. I don't care. Come on in. I'm gonna be transparent. This is what I'm about. He's got nothing to hide. He's got nothing to hide. But I saw Tristan. And Tristan was like, had a vibe of like, get this snake out, which is kind of the vibe I would have had, to be honest, having been in this business for a really long time, because these people don't have noble intentions. I mean, that was, that was a plot to, to get the Tates, and they weren't getting the narrative they wanted, so they had to you know, splice in all this outside video and distort. We, I think it's anyone with a brain can see that. By the way, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, and get in the chat. We are going to be reading super chats today, so make your voices heard. I want to ask you about biology, though. Um, we live in a time right now where there's a refusal to acknowledge that men are men and women are women. It's wokeism. I had Hunter Avalon here the other day. I don't know if you know him, but he's a liberal guy. He's kind of like a destiny type. Um, he came and he felt like a lot of what we say women want and what men want is all society telling us that's the reality. And I said, no, I said women biologically Aren't, aren't wired to do the grind, the nine to five grind in the same way that guys are. We don't have that steady run of testosterone. Of I, my work-life balance is important to me. Biologically, I'm looking for a man who's gonna work more steady than I am because I'm gonna wanna have a baby. Talk to me about why there's a need, Sterling, I'll start with you, to have that pushback against people who just wanna disregard the basic differences between men and women. I mean, the closer you get to a survival scenario, the closer men and women resort back to their basic biological natures like you take if you took this guy you were talking to i don't know what his name is Hunter, i'm not familiar yeah. with him if you put him and his wife in the middle of the jungle okay what's gonna happen he he probably won't be able to do this but the gender the gen, normal natural gender roles is gonna she's gonna like you know maybe gather some berries look after the campsite he's gonna go out try and find a deer or whatever hunt it kill it bring it back like to me it's 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 staggering like people can say oh these these gender roles are like societally based no, like the, before we had societies, this is how we were functioning. You can look at hunter-gatherer tribes that still exist all over the world, and they're still in these classical gender roles. Mm -hmm. We survived eons like yeah. this, and it's only in the last 20, 30 years of insanity that we think we're somehow better and smarter. This is the arrogance I can't stand that we think we're somehow smarter than our ancestors who survived and reproduced for thousands of years in much harsher conditions than we live now. But no, 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 no. We are somehow smarter than them because we've invented the fucking iPhone. Sorry <laughs> if I can't swear on your, your You show. can. My it's bad. all good. You can. What, then what do you think is, feel free to swear, you know, speak your minds. I don't, this is a censorship-free zone. Um, so... What do you think the motivation is, though, Justin? Because to me, it seems deeply sinister that society, I, I think society is now 
I think the feminization of men, the masculinization of women, and all the marketing you see coming down in media to support that is because they want to break the ties that bind between men and women. They Absolutely. want less people to Absolutely. form those unions. Well, there's more tax money for it. Mm -hmm. Like, it used to be you would get taxes from one, one individual. If you break us up, I think there's more people paying taxes, number one. And no, back That's to, interesting. I hadn't thought about that angle of it. Yeah, Just but the simplicity of that. Think about mm -hmm. that. Think about that. And then as far as the entitlement, women, unfortunately, sometimes forget that men invent, build, and maintain society in every way. So we're not that far away from what we were doing 200 years ago. It's just the people that actually do the work don't get credit. Mm -hmm. Like, n name, that, look, I have 170 guys working for me. There's no woman in the field. There's no woman applying to work in the field. There's they don't no, want the job. They don't want. They don't want that, and that's mm -hmm. completely okay because they're soft. They're nurturing. They're feminine. I'm not saying men and women are equal. In fact, I love women. Let me be the first <laughs> to tell you that I love women, and I do think that we're equal. But I do think that we are substantially different. And asking a woman to turn in the man to, to turn into the man that she wants to be with is a formula for her to be very, very unhappy. And I find that those women that when you walk in a room with them and you are firm and you are the man and you are a gentleman and you are leading, those are the women that fall the hardest mm -hmm. because they can finally let go of that burden that they never wanted in the first place. Absolutely. It's interesting. You use the word soft and I'm always like, my antennas are always up for what the trigger words are going to be. That is a trigger word. That women, soft? women, modern women will hear the word soft and they will take offense to that. I because don't want they a woman that's not soft. But they've been one. taught that soft is weak and they're supposed to be hard. And that they've somehow read that as an insult as, when what they should be saying is that the softness that a woman has is a beautiful thing. It's an irreplaceable thing. Absolutely. It's the most wonderful thing in the world. I said this on, the other day on Twitter about, about women that have babies. It, that's the oh, most, yes. I that's saw that the most beautiful, amazing sign of strength a woman could ever show to have a mm -hmm. child and to raise that child even after the birth. It's an incredibly difficult task to wake up every hour of the night. You go months and months and months without sleep, and the baby won't stop crying, and it's on it. and on and on and on and on. And I'll tell you right now, as a man, I don't want that heat. Mm -hmm. I would be a horrible mother. Horrible. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You're not supposed to be a mom. You know, I don't have that strength, and that's the point that I'm trying to make. And, and, and they want to go out and act like they want to be men, but they really don't want to be men just as much as I do not want to be a mother. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of, it's sad to me that, that we've had at least two generations of women who've been brainwashed that being a mother is somehow not as glorious as having a career. You're literally a wizard. You can create life from nothing. That is a superpower, and yeah. how are you not insanely proud and... and how does that not give you a tremendous self-esteem to be able to produce a living human being? I don't understand how that is is less glorified than than being like a lawyer or mm -hmm. an engineer or in the IT field. To me, that's insane. It is insane. I mean, and I I had a baby late. Um, I, I'm very open with the audience about the mistakes I made. Although, truthfully, my life worked out amazing. I have the best husband in the world. You know, I always talk about him. He's like my I love them to pieces, and I have the most beautiful child. But I always tell women that delay and that career focus and that stuff, like, not everybody gets lucky. Like, please listen to what I'm saying. You know, listen to what I'm saying. Um, but women are taught that that's, that's a sign of weakness and that somehow you're not as intelligent or as capable if you're not out there doing the grind. When the biggest joy, I mean, there is nothing in this world that brings me joy, the way my babies hugs, kisses, laughter. If he says, I love you, mom, that's all I, like, I'm like, oh, I have my, my husband and I have my child and that is a joy and a peace that no career could ever provide for me. I don't think men are wired the same way to, to, to make those statements. I just, men have a, a burden of responsibility that women don't have when it comes to certain things. And I believe you should have it in terms of putting a roof over everyone's head and being able to protect and provide, but I, I'm really concerned about this new wave of refusal to acknowledge the differences between men and women because it's just gonna lead to a lot of lonely, depressed, suicidal, unhappy people on both sides. And you know, uh, adding to what Justin said before, you're correct. Yes, it's, it creates more taxable people trying to separate and divide men and women, but it also makes the populace much easier to control. That's right. Right? When you hit, like, a society is built from families. The, the core foundation of right. a country is the family union with a mother and a father and kids. When you, if you can break that apart, 
because that is a strong thing. Mm-hmm. You you go to like rural communities where they where there's still ex- the norm and exists. They're strong little rural communities because right. they're built around stable families. Mm-hmm. But if you can break the stable family up, well then everyone is this little individual unit, and it's much much easier to control that because they're not as strong. Yeah, they don't right. have the patriarchal father figure in the home to galvanize everybody. Yeah, that's how you create a nation of dependence, which is essentially the goal, um, which is why I think Andrew Tate has become such an enormous threat to the system. Yes. Because this is a guy who, you know, and I know some people feel maybe they're only drawn to him for the self-improvement angle or whatever it may be, but for me, it was really, this guy is in their way. This guy is in the way of really bad people who recognize that it's an absolute necessity to weaken men to do what they want to do. Because who's going to be on the front lines of saying, no, you're not going to take my property? No, you're not going to, you know, my, my child's going to be homeschooled. I'm not putting my child into an indoctrination camp. No, you're not going to do X, Y, and Z. That's going to be the man. It's not going to be the woman in that house. So yep. they need those feminized men who are going to be, oh, really? Maybe I can line up for another a six vaccine. You know, like that nonsense is what they need. So that's what kind of woke me up to him. And I started really paying attention to that. I want to talk about the vice piece for a little bit. Um, first of all, have you both watched the full piece? Yeah. Did you watch the full I've piece? I've not seen it in its entirety, no. Okay. So you watch the full piece. It doesn't even matter. I'm sure you show a bunch of clips, and you know enough about it. the war room to be able to weigh in on the realities yeah. of what's going on there. Your impression, just when, were, were you surprised by what you saw? No, I mean, look, it's Vice. It's what I expected <laughs> them to do. Vice is known for, for pushing a very left-leaning agenda, obviously. I actually, I'm actually kind of disappointed, because I used to love Vice. Like, like 10, 15 years ago, I thought Vice did some fantastic journalistic work when they, yeah. would, they would go into like war zones and they, they produce some great stuff. Now it's just a pile of trash. I'm like, with a, with a very clear agenda, very clearly cut up and spliced and sitting down and watching the whole thing, I, I, I just couldn't help but laugh. You were there, most though. Of it. And I was at the you event. So do you know what occurred to me, what I would have done? I told the audience this. I would have taped the taping. You know, I would have, I tell people, and you, you guys should know this too, because there's going to be opportunities you're going to get. People are going to want to come. Oh, let me take a look at what Justin Wallen is doing. But you know what I do? I would say, hire somebody to tape the taping so that when they come out with their agenda, you can then say, oh, really, Matt? You were having an awfully good time with us hanging out the whole time, and now you're putting this piece out. I was surprised that they didn't do that. Can you just tell me, because you were there, and then, Justin, I want to get to you on the war room, because I know you talk a lot about guys and why they should get in there. I want to talk to you about the truth about what goes on at these events and all that. But can you just tell me what what was really going on that day that, that didn't come forth in the documentary? Well, Matt had a fantastic life-changing experience. He even got up and said that in front of everybody at the event. That, Compl- that didn't make com- it to the documentary? Completely cut that out of the documentary. Shocking. Everybody who went for the event had their life changed in a positive way. Everyone got up saying this. And then they sat, Andrew, like overall, and you can, and Sartorial has said this, we did, me and Sartorial did a, uh, a Twitter spaces a few days I ago saw talking about this. Um, overwhelmingly positive experience mm-hmm. had by Matt and his film crew as well, <laughs> who also, by the way, asked Sartorial if they could r- go into his, his uh, Ferrari. It wasn't Sartorial's idea to go in a Ferrari. It was them pushing Sartorial to get a drive in his Ferrari. Unsurprising. Not surprising. So that then they could paint him as a guy who only cares about cars. Exactly. <laughs> anyway, that's, that's a tiny little detail. Yeah. that I found funny. But then they sat Andrew down for three hours at the end of the event and just tried to grill him and grill him and grill him. And even Sartorial said this. He said, we should have filmed that, that entire three, three hour piece. Because out of three hours, they may be used about 30 seconds to a minute total. Because Andrew is such, he's so professional in the way he answers questions and the way he uses language. And in three hours, they couldn't find anything bad to use on him. Mm -hmm. They couldn't trap him for three hours of sitting there and and grilling him. And this tells you why they only just released this piece too. Because this was filmed, I think, back in like September or something. It's been a long time. And they were supposed to release it within like three or four weeks. That was the Mm -hmm. expectation. And everyone knew, okay, they're probably going to make it look, try to try to make Andrew look bad. They couldn't. They had all the footage they had. They couldn't find a way to make him look bad until several months later, Mm -hmm. he gets detained by the police. Now he can't speak out for himself and defend himself. Okay, now we can release this hit piece and we can throw in footage of him getting arrested and all this other stuff to try and frame him in a bad way. Mm-hmm. And it's, it's, there's no such thing as journalistic integrity anymore. No. That's amazing. And uh, one more thing I want to add. Yeah. There was a piece in that documentary where they're filming like a couple in a bedroom, like naked, 
Like yeah, from the outside, they, they from show the women. Outside. And, and I had no idea they did. No one at the event knew they did that. What was that? Because what they made it sound like was that Andrew announces in there, says, oh, maybe there's some girls here. My impression was like he was saying, oh, mingle, do whatever. You know, they made it sound like you guys had organized some, like, dark stuff and there were these <laughs> naked women being photographed what what well, was that s- some of these guys have what's called a girlfriend right so you know <laughs> occasionally men and women when when they love each other very much they spend time <laughs> privately together in a bedroom maybe matt's not familiar with that yeah i, I, I imagine he wouldn't be he might need a lesson but to, to me that's like how perverted is that they're going to sit outside the window and record a couple mm-hmm. private like without their permission like enjoying private intimate time and since when is that legal yeah. The hell's going on there? Yeah, who are those people? Maybe they'll sue them. I don't know. So, and did you see, I don't know if you saw the part about the war room, I want to bring you in, but they, they essentially paint it as a cult. They really do. They paint it, they throw in outside footage from other events, unrelated. They show the guys, you know, doing toasts, which there's no context around yeah. any of this. There's no context in anything. So can you just talk a little bit about what really happens at these war room events? Does it have even remotely something like the cultist environment that they, I mean, it really does pay, they pay, and it's obvious to somebody with eyes, ears, and who's alert in the world that that's, you know, the agenda is obvious. Let me just share with you what happened on the last event I went to. It yeah. was called Penetrating the Elite. It was run by Shooter, Satorial, in Dubai. All we did was go over how to dress at a dinner table. We, he literally brought in a woman I'm going to say this again. He brought in a woman to sit down and teach us all formal dining, how to properly sit at a table, act at a table. There's even a photo of me on the Internet somewhere where she used me as an example, and I sat down at the table. Mm. It, it was how to, how to act around high-status people, high-net-worth people, how to interact with them, how to engage with them. There was nothing about women or, or even fighting. There's, there's multiple different types of events mm-hmm. that help develop men all over the world, all of the time. And it's my deep, deep mission on my channel and to push people in the war room because I feel like the more strong men that are in this world, the happier women will be. I and always safer, say, frankly. And yes, the safer women will I be. I always say you build strong men for women, not in spite of them. Yep. Mm-hmm. And so that's all the war room is. It's building strong men. People ask me, they're like, if you had a daughter, would you want her to marry a guy like you? And I'm like, you're fucking right, I would. Absolutely. I know she'd be safe. I know she'd be cared for. I know she'd have a house. I know that the man would be in charge. And I know ultimately she would be happy. Mm-hmm. So there is no doubt that I'd want my daughter to marry a man like me or like Sterling or one of the guys in the war room. And if that means it's a cult, then so be it. It's interesting, too, even the component. You're saying, you know, all the events aren't necessarily about fighting. This particular one they showcased was a cage fight. But what was odd to me was that I think Matt actually did the opposite of what he intended because he thought he was going to go in there and he was going to showcase, oh, these guys are bullying me and these guys are all about toxic masculinity. And actually what it looked like was, wow, this is really good for men. There's something wrong with this guy, meaning Matt, if he can't comprehend that guys need to, A, know how to struggle. Like, you need to know how to get in a ring and fight. You need to know how to have a backbone. You know, there's a scene in there where Andrew says something, somebody says something like, are we going to train before this? And Andrew's like, no, I'm not going to train you. If you've been going through your whole life not training, whose problem is that? I was like, I got up and applauded. Like, I was like, yes, because I'm so tired of these coddled baby men. And Matt was kind of showcasing himself as what's wrong with men today to me. All I saw was this guy who was sitting in a safe space around a bunch of men who knew how to do what it meant to be a man. So it, it, there was a backfire there, I think. And, and people were like, hmm. Now, I'm sure it appealed to you know the woke crowd. But it was really interesting to me. Um, what do you think the takeaway for... I don't want to ask you to speak for the Tates, obviously, but people in that circle, you are in that circle. Like, do, do, what do you think the takeaway? Has there been, do you think, a lesson learned? Like, I, I truly don't want people like this invite. I would hope, like, they wouldn't invite people like this into their space again. I don't think there's any net benefit for them to allow this stuff or for yourself. Or do, 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 you, do you have a different perspective on allowing access after seeing what transpired? I mean, there's no such thing as bad publicity, really, and they, especially when you're Andrew. I mean, look what happened in the UK. I don't know if you're aware of what uh, the UK just passed, like a 
two, I think it was two billion dollars spending. Oh bill yes, yeah, to, yeah. To educate young men in UK schools on what Andrew Tate really stands for. Yeah, we covered some of that here. Basically, like he's mm -hmm. he's now Andrew's now Voldemort. And you can't <laughs> yes. speak his name in UK schools, yes. otherwise you'll get thrown out of the classroom. Which means when you go to take a piss, that Andrew's name's going to be on the stall. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All that is is that free that's, top that's G. two billion dollars worth of free advertising yep. for Andrew. Congratulations, Good. well done. Good. Mm -hmm. Like, it's you know what bothers me about it though? Like it gives them clicks. You know, Vice was sinking. You know, the reason that they released this delayed was one, they were sinking revenue-wise. They yeah. needed the boost. They need eyeballs, yeah. And number two, you know, it puts them back on the map. And it's just an ugly machine. These companies, they disseminate their webs, having worked in this business for the last decade. What happens is, you know, yeah, they come home. And I think actually what happened with the Vice piece, I don't think they got the story they wanted, which is why you say they're sitting there for three hours trying. I think there was a panic. A call was probably made. Back to camp, base camp. Oh, I don't think we have it. So then they splice in all this stuff. They bring in women making accusations that already have gone to the police and been proven that there was no evidence to substantiate. I mean, it's, it's absurd they, what went that, on. That interesting detail, they even put... So at the very end of that piece, there's a woman who sits there crying and they show um, some uh, text WhatsApp exchanges. Yes. And you can see it for a brief second. They put it on there, her consenting. Right. It's shown on the screen. If you freeze it at the right time, That's you can right. actually zoom in and you can we, actually we see We cover that. She says it's not... I'll say grape, because YouTube, you know, if I consent. And she even says, of course I want to see you. Why wouldn't I want to see you? So, you know, but they don't focus on those. No, they pull not. back other. Um, so you're right. I mean, it, it, can you make the argument no publicity is bad publicity? Sure. I just can't stand that these people get any attention at all, to be perfectly honest. At some point, Fair it's enough. just like, uh, it, it nauseates me, to be honest, because I know they put their little webs out. Oh, then you forward it, you do this, you do that, and it, it makes them happy. I saw Matt, he was tweeting. I don't know if you saw his tweets. You say he was saying nice stuff at the event. His tweets were all nasty, yeah. low, you know, below the belt nonsense. He revealed, you know, who he is. By the way, did you all see his profile picture on Twitter? It's him and a little goat, a little baby goat doing a, just saying. Whatever. The image fits. Okay, but we're going to move on, but I want to, um, Deli, do we have super chats? A lot. Um, okay, lot. let's do some super chats. And then, guys, uh, gals, we're going to raise to $10 and, up, $10 and up after this because these guys are just too popular. We'll be here all day reading chats. Okay, Deli, give me some. Uh, the first one's from Hater. <laughs> great. That was a great start. <laughs> he said, happy wife, happy life is an ultimatum, not a promise. True. Then we got, let's see. It's well phrased. Kuzu said, hey, Justin, I followed you for a few months, and I'd like to hear what your advice you can give to someone from a third world country, Argentina, to grow. I'm 21 and from a middle class family. Some advice? So I would just know this, man. No matter where you're from, you have the ability to make money online. Mm -hmm. That's why we push Hustlers University so hard, because we live in a different time than I grew up in, that Sterling grew up in, Jenadiah grew up in, where you now have the ability to touch the entire world via the internet. And I think that's one of the, one of the positive things about the internet. Every generation gets a new set of opportunities that come with different problems, like Instagram is an opportunity and a problem. Uh, so if I were you, I would leverage the internet, I would join Hustlers University, I think that you could probably easily work because it's only $50 a month. It is the best deal in education. I didn't mean to plug, but this is actually my, the free. answer. This is actually the answer that I would give him. Mm -hmm. For $50, he can't go to Stanford and learn business for that. Yeah. But he can go online and learn from somebody that's making money every day doing exactly what he's teaching. And there's no college in the country that does that. Mm -hmm. So that's what I would do, young man. And then, then I would figure out a way um, through the internet again to see if I couldn't, you know, get to a better place in the world. The world is much smaller than it used to be. And for that reason, I think you have every opportunity to leave there if you so choose. Good luck. Uh, the, the rational male says, five minutes of alpha trumps, five years of beta. That's um, No, uh, Zentinence uh, sent $50. He said, feminists conflate submission with supplication. Submission is willful, but supplication is voluntary. Respectful woman gain the aforementioned protect, protection, guidance, provision, etc., for what she gives to a man as he leads the family slash relationship. Yeah, let me just say something on that one. It's interesting because feminists, when they look at situations where a man is head of household, will repeatedly say they can't 
they can't understand that that's elective by women. They immediately see it as a woman's being subjugated or like they, they view you as chained to the stove. And I'm like, they've you never understand. had a woman submit to them. They and don't, they've the never men, seen genuine desire in their life. The men you're saying have. Yes. Seen that. The men have never seen genuine desire from a woman in their life. They don't believe it because they have themselves have never seen it. Would you say for a woman then that's critical of that, that potentially she also hasn't felt that desire. From Absolutely. Men? You have a lot of women out there. Just yesterday, we were on the show, and the girl in the red was talking about how she was willing to have a mid-tier man. And everything that was running through my mind was bullshit, because I could go in your inbox right now, and there's <laughs> 50 guys that have decent jobs, that are decent looking, a decent height, decent life, and she is passing them up. And until a man, like the men that we're talking about being, come into a room and grab her life by the throat, she is not going to get married. Mm. Because a woman does not want to make a deal where she does not feel like she is winning. Mm -hmm. And so that that man that is weak could never understand a woman wanting to be submissive in that way because he has never felt it. Women also lie all the time. I mean, they lie all the time. Yeah. You'll see them. They'll say, oh, I just want in one breath. They'll say, I just want, you know, a good guy. I just want a good guy. And then you're like, oh, what does Bullshit. that mean? They say, I just want a good guy. You know, I don't care about this. And then you let them talk a little bit more. And they lose sight of like that talking point they're supposed to say, and then suddenly it's well, he's got to make 100k a year. He's got to be six feet. He's, he's got to be gotta above be average like in every, every aspect. I can one possibly one girl, hang. no joke, was on a panel. We covered it the other day because we were getting into the kink component, the potential kink component that might have been in the exchanges between Andrew and you know they were trying to paint it like it was great, but we were like, is this kink? Could this just be kink? And there was a woman who was like, I need to be strangled. So that was no joke, modest looking woman. What she was really saying is she wanted a dominant man. She was trying Absolutely. to put it into words. Yeah, I was about to say that earlier. Like, I don't have a sex channel, but there's a reason. <laughs> Someone does. There's a reason Fifty Shades of Grey is such a popular book. That's what I said here the other day. There, yeah. there, there is no situation where I believe that a woman in some way, and I'll say some way just to be somewhat correct politically, mm -hmm does not want to be dominated in the bedroom. And to be quite honest with you, if I can't take that lead, I don't want to sleep with that woman. Mm -hmm. it, it just feels off to me. Yeah. I said I, that I to Hunter never. yesterday. I said to Hunter, I said, was it yesterday? I don't even know. It's all blur. But I said to him something like, you know, women don't want to go into a bedroom and they have to be the doer of, they got to make it all happen. I mean, that is deeply unsatisfying moment for a woman. Yeah. And he but was he, like, well, that, it depends on the bedroom. And I'm like, oh, no, honey, no. you just, so no, that, it doesn't. That guy, I don't know who we're talking about, but by the sounds of it, that guy has never been with a woman who's truly submitted to him in the bedroom. Mm -hmm. That guy has never has never been able to get that out of a woman. Agreed. Right, because he's just not masculine and dominant enough for her to want to completely let go, and that's a big part of you know BDSM or kink or any mm. any going down any of these kind of fantasies. That's what it's about. It's about that woman being able to let go and absolve all responsibility and free herself and really just get into her sexual essence. And funny if enough. Go, if you all go into bedrooms, I, I don't know. You, are you single? I don't know anything about I don't know what you want to reveal. There's but. a couple of women who would hate me to say that okay, I am. But but you, so you're not married, though? I don't know. <laughs> I'm I don't not know married, what you're, no. Okay. So are you... I'm trying to figure out, like, you're saying if you walked into a bedroom, you meet a girl, you like her, but then all of a sudden you walk to the bedroom and she wants to be the dominant, you're like... I, I, no. I wouldn't sleep with her. You wouldn't. I wouldn't. You wouldn't. Is it because you... Wouldn't enjoy it? Like, what, what I if, absolutely wouldn't enjoy you it. You wouldn't enjoy it. No, of course not. But, mm -hmm. but what he just said is really important because that's not just the bedroom. That's a relationship. Yep. A relationship if a woman dynamic. feels safe to let go in a relationship, she will become mm -hmm. submissive. I have found that women are much happier in that role than sitting there fighting with their man about who's going to be the man. Right. You know what I hear all the time? is when I go out on a date with a woman, especially if this woman is, say, uh, like a, a, a boss babe, like a, not necessarily a boss babe, but like she runs her own business. She's like, you know, a big six-figure earner, um, a managerial type, right? right. She's I in a position in her that. life where she's in charge of other people, in particular men. Right. Consistently, I will get complimented on the fact that I tell her simple, simple things on the first date. Meet me here at this time, wear this, and I order her drinks for her. I order her food for her. She doesn't have to do a damn thing. Yeah. Men we will be blown away at how that is so simple to do and how women these days absolutely fall head over heels for a guy who just takes the lead like that because they're not used to it anymore. They're in, in their whole life, they are constantly having men tell them they can do no wrong, constantly sucking up to them, kissing their ass, not disagreeing with them, not, st not you know, standing on their own two feet and holding their own goddamn opinions. 
It's just dudes rolling over for women mm. constantly. That's all these women see in their entire life is dudes rolling over backwards for them. Guys are afraid to do that stuff, though, because yeah. guys are told now, don't open a door for a woman. She, don't, she doesn't want that. She's going to, don't order for a woman. You're That's stepping a, on her toes. I so guys mistake. don't follow I that think, advice. I think, a lot, I think as a part of that, which is men who are resentful, because at some, there's probably a, there's a, there's a, a, definitely a group of guys out there who were the gentlemen mm -hmm. or tried to behave gentlemanly. Got trashed. But they got taken advantage of because they weren't the man yet. Okay. Right? They were just the foodie call. Right? So they did it, but they didn't do it right. And now well, they, they did it, but they weren't the guy that, demand, that, that deserved the respect okay. yet. So right? they, so they, they yet. acted like a gentleman and they did all those things that they were told to do. Right. And then they got passed over for like, the, the Chad in the background, the Chad, yeah. who she just went off and slept with immediately, right? Mm -hmm. And so they get resentful about that, and so they think, oh, I will, I will never do this for a woman ever again, ever, because I got used in this, got these particular circumstances. But what the reality is, well, that guy needs, you can totally be the gentleman. We're, we're, I would like to think that you'll yeah. be a very uh, gentleman. Bro, right? absolutely. But I will you not have let to be that man door. first. You have to be the guy that yeah. uh, demands that, not demands, but have the guy that, that earns that respect from her in the first place, respect is the foundation. It has to come from there first. Mm -hmm. You can't, otherwise it, you're, you're trying to coerce behaviors out of a woman that she doesn't even want to do. It's obliga obligatory. Right, because right. she doesn't trust you. She doesn't, all of those components have to kind of work together. Yeah. Right. Justin, and that's you what that? I was just going to say is this why I'm not a very, very big fan of game or pickup because you have this hollow man that's going to walk up to a woman and he has this list of things he's going to say to either make her feel insecure or to be funny or whatever, but the bubble, the bubble is going to pop. Right. So she's going to find you out. So you have to be that man already. And mm -hmm. if you walk up to her and you're confident and you're confident when you tell her, do not open a door around me and you are never going to pay for a dinner, then you're going to get played. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can't talk your way out of doing that work. And she knows it because you can't talk with conviction. You can't act with conviction. You can't look her in the eyes and tell her what you really think. And for that reason, she will never respect you. So yeah. you're going to have a problem. I can't tell you how many women when I was, I didn't date that much, truthfully, but I remember being in my 20s. And I can't tell you how many stories I would hear. I, grew, I was in New York City of women telling me, like my friends, he didn't even walk me home. I walked home, you know, 16 blocks myself at 2 o'clock in the morning. And no one even checked to make sure. I, I'm like, Girlfriend, what are you doing? You know, it's it's there's there's so much of that going on too, where there's this deficit of guys, either because they're afraid to act like men, they've been told not to, or because they don't know how to, they don't have the proper guidance, maybe they don't have the proper guys around them. I think also there's a good conversation to be had about fatherless homes yep. and what's going on in homes where there's no male figure that's teaching you from a young age, like this is how you need to treat, you know, women, this is how you need to behave. I want to get a couple more questions for the chat and then I want to go to a tweet from Justin. Got you, um, dating secrets said shout out to Justin and Sterling. These guys are on the spot with talking points for young men young men and even women. Dialing in need to hear and keep the fire going on the torch. And Judd Dial, you go. Um Purple Pill Pod said these two men will carry the torch well if they have if they have to, prayers to Top G and Tristan. Then um, we got Zenton and since $100. The egregious de deviation from traditionalism is nothing more than the youth given the illusion of power while allowing influence of society when they lack the mental fortitude. Life experience to have a more meaningful understanding of the world, kids with toy analogy. Um, Jay Waller, before listening to your content, most of the men were invisible to me. How naive I was not to know that men maintain all the infrastructures around the world. Uh, shout out to Waller and Sterling. Thanks for the everything you do for young men. Uh, and Joshua said, for the best example of vice manipulating narratives, search the Jordan Peterson interview from 2018, where after they originally aired the version, they came out with an unedited version, have not done that since then. I don't know if you all saw, I did a breakdown of the Vice feminism panel that was, Just Pearly was on, oh, it was ridiculous. They edited out a bunch of stuff, all this. They also did a panel on masculinity I'm going to be breaking down next week, and one of the people that was asked about masculinity was a man in a dress. Just going to leave it at that. Okay, so um, let's I, go to... I guarantee <laughs> I know what he, every talking point. He was all, come now. I mean, and he's just weighing in. Okay, it is what it is. All right, Jay Waller, I want to get to this tweet. Um, Deli, can you bring this tweet up? from Justin about questions, starts with questions, my life and friendship with Andrew. You see that one? Yep. Okay. 
So a woman challenges you <laughs> and oh, this says, you, you must have given some advice, right? And the woman says, aren't you good friends with Andrew Tate? Do you think you're in a position to be given life lessons? And you say, questions my life and friendship with Andrew while she competes against 22-year-olds to get on boats in Miami. Sad existence. And below that, you see you saying, you look, you look to be middle-aged, single woman, without children or family. Is there a bigger failure as a woman? I think not free the Tates. Ooh. Talk to me about this. This was, this was, you got a little tough, but talk to me about where you were coming from with this. Because I, I actually think there's two really important points to be made here to women that need to be heard. But you tell me what you, wh where you were coming at with this. Yeah, so, I mean, she caught me at the right time. I was on a plane. I looked down and I see this. And so I click on her profile. She followed me. Um, I'm pretty sure she had liked some of my photos. <laughs> I didn't see them for whatever reason. She attacked my friend, and all I see is her half naked all over Miami, and she's clearly marketing on the internet. I can clearly see she's middle-aged, mm -hmm. and, you know, she started it. But <laughs> uh, one thing I will say is this. I, I will say this because I don't, I don't think it was a complete message. If I'm being honest, and one thing I'm going to work on very, very hard this year is to give complete messages because I do not hate women. Some women can't have children. I'm not talking about those women. Mm. There are a lot of women that are very productive in society that do jobs that must be had, and I'm very appreciative, appreciative of mm -hmm. those women. To be very, very clear, this particular woman, I was looking to put her in her place. Yeah. So I do want to be clear there because... I don't think it's good to always just bash women. I'm proud that I stood up for my friend. I'm not completely always going to be proud if I hurt a woman. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's the right message to send young men. I got a lot of positive feedback from that tweet, and I left it up because I'm standing up for my friend. Mm -hmm. But I do want the young men to know that bashing women is not something that should be looked up to. You yeah. know, she had it coming. I would do it again. But... Uh, in regards to bashing women, it's not something I support. Well, to be fair, she came at you. She was she saying did. you, she you did. gave some advice, and she made it like you weren't, you didn't have sound enough character to right. be given the advice because you were friends with Andrew Tate. So right. to be fair, she came at you. But to be honest with you, I think that, listen, if you're not sensitive and you don't have that knee-jerk reaction, what I took from it were two points. Number one, women are now told that, as we said before, having kids is somehow you know a bad thing when that is the biggest badge of honor you could ever wear in your life. I didn't take it as you were talking about women who couldn't have children. It was very clear to me that you yeah. were making a point yeah, about yeah, people yeah, yeah. Who, and their priorities. But this is also something people don't want to talk about. And I think sometimes it's easier as a female to make this point because there's, you get less attack. But the reality is, if you are middle-aged and you are in a stage of life where you are, say you're, I'm 43, to be right. transparent. If you're 43, 44-year-old woman, and you're competing with 22-year-olds, you're gonna have a problem. Right. Right. You're gonna have a problem. Now, I'm not competing with 22-year-olds. I got my man, I got my baby, I'm doing something different. Right. But if I were competing for that ticket on a yacht, and I, I take some pride in my appearance, you know, I, I work out, I eat well, but I wouldn't want to compete against my 22-year-old self. I'll tell you that straight up. Yeah. So that is the legitimate point. And I don't think guys who are saying that are saying that to be hurtful to women. I think they're saying that as like, don't waste those years where your beauty is so precious and your youth is so precious and your fertility is so precious. Just be realistic. And that's why I tweeted what I tweeted right behind it to make it very clear that I think that a woman that has a child is one of the most beautiful things she could possibly do. Right. You know? And it's not to say you can't be a beautiful woman at 60. At, of course, there's beauty in every age, but it's, it's different. You know, if we're talking about a sexual marketplace, fertility yeah. plays a role there for a reason. Guys are looking to have yeah. families. They're looking to have babies. You're looking at a 25-year-old. It's much more likelihood that all of that can come to fruition than you're looking at a 45-year-old. Maybe that 45-year-old is also stunning in her own way, but it's different. It's different. In the same way, I had this conversation with my husband this morning, and I was like, you know, guys also are aware of things that change with age. If you're a guy, you could have everything going for you. You're fit. You're in shape. Maybe you're a guy who's been fit and in shape your whole life, and you say to yourself at 60, I wouldn't want to box my 25-year-old self. That could happen. Yep. It's just life, right? You know? So it's just a, it, for some reason, you can tell men. You can be straight with men. You can't be straight with women. Yeah, I crushed her. It hurt her. She blocked me immediately. She blocked you after yeah, liking she cut your off, photos she cut off to the boot? Comments. Man, yeah. oh, man. She was mad, man. <laughs> man. You, know? you know what? I have, a, I have a theory on this, on why we yeah, kind of molly, molly coddle women a lot like this. Mm -hmm. We don't tell them the truth a lot. Mm -hmm. And I think, I think deep down we actually kind of understand that men grow through pain. 
Like men have to go through challenges and obstacles and then go through fire and then come out the other side stronger. But I think for the in the large part, that is not the case with women. Like women, I mean, you know, we talk about women who've gone through like an abusive relationship or have had a kind of a traumatic experience. It tends to damage them after the fact. They don't, they don't tend to come out better nope. for that. So we try. So I think this is like a biological thing for us to try and nurture, which I think is correct, nurture and protect women from pain mm -hmm. because it keeps them. I mean, pure for want of a better word, but it keeps it keeps them healthy, mentally healthy, right. keeps them as their best version of themselves. Whereas men have to actively go through that pain to become the best version of themselves. I completely agree with that. One thing I would add to that is this, is I think one of the most fulfilling things in love, whether it's romantic love or love for a child, especially a little girl, would be protecting them. Mm -hmm. I, I don't want a woman that I can't save from a castle and a dragon because a man wants to be a hero. He wants to go through that pain and sacrifice for that woman. Mm -hmm. And if he comes home to a woman that cannot acknowledge that or that thinks that she can do it as good or better, then what the fuck is he in the house for? That's the I don't need a man mantra. Yeah, I don't need the man now, mantra. Need man. Yeah, mm -hmm. and I, th I think that men protecting women in that way is probably one of the most beautiful things there is about love. Mm -hmm. It's just the world out there telling women that, that it's not worth anything anymore as they drive down the road. Uh, look around this room. There's nothing in this room that was not invented, built, or maintained by a man. There's nothing in here. Mm -hmm. There's nothing. There's not one thing in here. And so creating that protection, provision, protecting a little girl from having pain or, or having to cry, man, what else, what other kind of fulfillment could you get as a husband or a father? Please tell me because I don't know. And, and I think that that's one thing that is really making men check out too is that at the end of the day, they're not even going to be appreciated for going through that pain. So what is it for anymore? Isn't it also, like, to me, it's dangerous, though. It's getting to the point where it's dangerous to not acknowledge this men and women are different and have different potential, different capabilities. I showed a picture the other day of a military scene, and it was Kamala Harris standing in front of, you know, a bunch of military men and women. I don't know what their roles were, but I looked at that, and it was, you know, a lot of women there. And I said... <laughs> Then suit up. In it, they were they were in they were in gear. Now I don't know if they were medics. I don't know, but I said I really hope this isn't a picture of who we have on the front lines of combat, because we also have to be realistic about that. Like if I if there's a fire in my house, I use this example all the time. But if there's a fire, say I'm home alone, my husband's not there, whatever, I call the fire department. Do I want to see someone coming to save me that's my size? No, I want a big strapping guy that I know is going to be able to, you know, throw me over his shoulder, get my dog, get my, run me down. You know, this is just right. the way that it is. So to not acknowledge that and to say, I don't need a man. Oh, I can hire out that stuff. Really, honey, who are you hiring to come to your rescue at three o'clock in the morning if someone's banging on your door and trying to break in? No one. You're going to be there alone. So I, you, these women need to be woken up. And that's why I don't know if you caught it. I did a, a I did a, um, Bila takes on Bila, where I just wrecked myself on self-defense. Did you uh, see it? Yeah. I did a whole. I had originally come out. Oh my god! I'm not even gonna explain yeah, we it had to that Sterling. Conversation but I, I went I and did a video. About it. I went and did a video where I was like, I was wrong, man. This and this is what I'm talking about. You internalize this stuff. And I had said originally that I had taken issue with Andrew Tate's commentary on self-defense, and I had to go and be like oh man, this is just, I'm wrong here. And here's why I'm wrong. Because I don't, I want women to be embracing 2A and, and, and getting their, you know, their guns. And, but I don't want, I don't want them thinking they're going to meet a guy in a dark alley and they're going to win. Come on, you know? So yeah. I've been doing a lot of that. Um, Deli, keep an eye. We're going to do 10 and up. Guys, remember, I want to ask you about, um, I, have a, I have a tweet for you. This is going to seem silly. Y'all ready? I want to get your, I just want to talk about it. It's because it's interesting. Let's take this tweet. This is from, this is not from either of them. This is the second, this is number six. Deli, can you put that up? Yes. Got it? Yep. Okay, cool. Let's put it up so they can see it. I can, I'm looking at it now, but. This is number six, the tweet. Was that number six right here? No, that one we did. Uh, we want the one after that. We want twitter.com jamacool. You see it? Yeah, there we go. Okay. I want to have this conversation. If you could choose only one, number one, number two. If you could say which one was a feminist and which one was <laughs> not. <laughs> very no, helpful. wait, hold up though. Let's number say one, one is the feminist. Bullshit. I'd say bullshit. You're a liar. Because she gets attention from men. Yeah. 
two is more likely to be a feminist. Right. Like just by the little, way she looks. Like it's that just, little troll Thumberg. Yeah. Yeah. So would you, but, are, but is that really what came to your mind first? It wasn't just absolutely. the visual component yeah, of it. Yeah, absolutely. Because the first question is be. such a no-brainer, right? Like, let's not bullshit. It's such a no-brainer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So then you get into the, the, the more intelligent question of which one of these are, are going to protest or, or be a feminist. Can I tell you, though, in the comments, the reason I brought this up is because there was comment after comment after comment of people saying, oh, I would pick number two. Of course they would because they know the, the first yeah. one would break their heart. Yeah, number one ain't picking them. That's they for damn sure. They can't, <laughs> right, she's gonna, they can't drive that Ferrari. <laughs> she's going to have Jedediah. a side piece. Is that what they're yeah. worried about? She's going to yeah. have someone slide into I will, her DMs. I will say. Oh, no, well, the average man hates that woman because mm-hmm. that woman has never given him attention ever in his life. He has tried. Right. Where do you place, though, because I, I, my experience with women is that there are some beautiful women that are just terrible people, profoundly. T- they treat men like garbage. So, and, and what, I could, what I get concerned with is sometimes, I, and not all, of course, there are beautiful women who treat men w- wonderfully. But I'm just saying what I see is sometimes with guys is beautiful women are like, it's like they're hypnotized by them, right? Like a beautiful woman will get away with the most horrific behavior. And guys keep coming back, keep coming back, keep coming. Is that, does that go into some of the conversations you have with men where you're like, don't be hypnotized by a pretty face. It's, a woman's got to be more than just a pretty face as far as I'm concerned. Two things on that. Number one, that's why abundance, the word abundance is so important because they have a thing called one-itis, right? And so if this is your only shot at a woman that beautiful, then, one-itis, you're, you yeah, said? then you're very likely to choke, right? Kay. Because she's a, your only shot at that kind of beauty. Mm. And then number two, I love to say that pretty ain't a pass. And I mean that. Mm. I, I tell women, especially beautiful women, pretty ain't a pass. And they always laugh and they know exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. Just because you're beautiful, you will not get away with bullshit with me. And for that reason, she has to respect me on a whole nother level because she is f- experiencing it a lot of times for the first time. When you treat her like a normal woman, when she sees that you're going to treat her like a normal person, and that allows you to actually get close to that girl mm. in a whole different way. Because how is she going to get close to you and, and open up to you and be vulnerable with you when you're placating to her, right. she can't. She it's can't do it's it like all. these guys will treat a beautiful woman like a like a fan treats a celebrity. That's right. Yep. And you and we both know as guys who've you know we've, we occasionally will walk around and people will recognize us. And because you have your personality out on the internet, right? They think they know you, right? As a person, but they really just know what you put out online, which is fine. But that is a very similar experience that the average beautiful woman lives with where guys come up to her and they treat her like a like a celebrity and they don't treat her like a human being mm-hmm. in my experience every gorgeous woman is extremely nice and friendly and lovely but in in, in these guys experience because they're coming up and treating her like a fan in Got their it. experience oh she's rude oh she she's disrespectful she didn't give me the time of day well yeah because you were you, you weren't treating her like a goddamn human being to start with because human mm-hmm. beings are flawed and like you said pretty in a pass because pe- everyone has flaws so you don't get an immediate like green light just because you were blessed with genetics. Yeah. You, what is going to keep me around? If you're if you're very annoying, mm-hmm. I ain't going to keep you around. Like if you're if you're, you know, uh, irritable and it's just disrespectful of my time and not not worth me spending time around. If you don't, if our values don't right. align, if you're not going to make a good mother, what is the point of me even engaging with this at this point in my life? It's like. I've had sex before. Right. <laughs> like, that's, it's not this wondrous, magical right. thing like it was when I was a teenager. <laughs> right. You know, it's, it doesn't have that pizzazz anymore mm-hmm. that, that would make me, make, that would make me ig- ignore red flags. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's exactly right. I'll tell you, that's one thing that we teach from time to time is like, listen, you, if you're in a relationship with a woman and she does something that you're not, you're not okay with or is not in line of the framework and she tries to sleep with you, roll over on her and go to sleep. Take that power away from That's her. That's brutal, by the way. It is. That and is it, brutal. But it should be because mm-hmm. she's using that to try to get back in favor with you. And you should never be so weak that you fall to sleeping with a woman in order to and, and let that frame get out of hand. I will roll over on your ass. Good night. <laughs> now, it's very, it's very, very easy. <laughs> Good night. It's very easy for us to sit here and say this, right? Yeah, yeah. The average guy, the reason he would get one-itis is because in like the average dude in six months he maybe has one woman who's slightly interested in him. Right. Right. He's in not getting any swipes, And he might he might not even any, have yeah. a chance with her. He might ruin blow his chances with her. So that's why we we try to tell guys you have to act in abundance 
and it helps to actually be in abundance. It makes it a lot easier to be if you actually have abundance to, to act accordingly. But if you act like the kind of guy what will it adopt these behaviors and these attitudes towards life where sex isn't the be all and end all of everything, mm -hmm. then you're going to start getting far better outcomes in your dating life. Mm -hmm. And that's by becoming that guy, that guy that doesn't get a swipe, hasn't built himself up. Mm -hmm. He hasn't built style. He hasn't built his body. He yeah. hasn't built class. He hasn't done, done any of these things. Doesn't have a friend who's great with a camera. Right, right. And so <laughs> let, me, let, me, let me put it, this is, this is kind of off the cuff, but I thought it would be funny to do. It just hit me a minute ago. I want you... Jedediah, to uh -oh. understand. Are you going to show me your DMs or something? Yes, I am. Yes, that's what I, <laughs> I came am. For. I want you to swipe down all the girls waiting for me to like them back. I'm going to do and this. And tell me what these Y'all know like. I have access to something you want. Oh, yeah. Oh, wow. It's quite a plethora. <laughs> it's quite a... It's quite a group. Those are not ugly women. They're not unattractive. I will. I can attest to the fact that going. most of them very It'll attractive. It'll most keep of them are them. very. I mean, we'd need like a couple hours just to scroll through this list. I ain't playing. But um, <laughs> yeah, most of these are what I would consider. Like I, I would say the eight and up crowd. So eight that's up pretty good. Eight and up crowd. And that's under twenty four. Yeah. So and let me ask you this though, honest qu honest question, because we talk a lot about you know the OnlyFans and all that, but is it a turnoff for you? to see women ostentatious on the Instagram, half naked on the Instagram? Does that bug you? Or does it depend on what you plan to do with her in your life? Yep. I'll put you, them in you a just answered the question yourself. Yep. You does put, it though? You put them do, in a do guys really, because yeah. I said yesterday, I think guys tend to break women out into play and serious. Is that is that accurate? I'd say that's very accurate. I completely agree with that, yeah. OK, so if there's a woman that you connect, you take out on a date, you connect with, and you actually say to yourself at the end of that date, man, I could take this woman home to mom. Like, you really like her. Then you go onto her Instagram, and you see half naked all over the place. Is Normally, it, you've seen her Instagram first. Yeah. OK, let's say you haven't, though. Would that be a deal breaker for it's you? It almost never happens that way. I hate to so say So you it. do the research first. It's normally how it happens. Hmm. See, look, and that's another funny thing that I'll say about this is me and Sterling openly say these things on the internet, on our platforms, mm. and you go into our Instagram and it's still full of women. Now, meanwhile, the guy that, the guy that hates us and is out here fighting for women, I promise you the Walsh kid, he's not got women in his, in his DMs. That's, and that's interesting, too, because if women were so bothered by the content of what you're saying, yeah. you wouldn't have those messages. That's Do why you find I look it's at more what women, women internationally, what, though? Is it more American women, or is it because that's another theory that's out there? This it doesn't is an American matter. Problem. It doesn't matter the country. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The there's, doesn't matter. There's no country on this planet where Love we have it. not cleaned up. <laughs> 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 there is no country we've gone to because oh, it's all man. the same. It's mm -hmm. all primal. It's not the language. It's primal. Mm -hmm. I can't tell you how many women I've seen Sterling or even myself maybe like be with and like they don't speak English. <laughs> They don't speak English. That's not easy to navigate that situation. Yeah, it is. <laughs> it's actually easier. It's actually easier. It's I'll, tell, easier. I'll tell you. No, no it no, is. It no. is easier. It's I'm, way easier. Imagine this. Imagine this. You're on a date with a girl, and you have to type a message in Portuguese. It's great. And then you hand it to her, and she no, giggles. No, stop. She giggles. Google Translate game is Google, I, We're undefeated at Google Translate. Yeah. It's and the you, best. But then you couldn't it's do It's awesome. That. You and, really, and, and, it, and it works out for it. you. Think re, about it. Think about it. These girls? Yes. Think about it from your perspective yes. as a woman. For a second, Jenna. Think about it from a woman's perspective. I wouldn't want right? to do that. No, no, no. Oh, let me paint the picture well. for you. We're, we're on a date and we can't communicate. Can you speak Spanish or whatever? Even though I speak a bit of Spanish, I'm going to pretend, pretend I don't. Okay. Right. It's way better. It's Google Translate, and you have to sit there in anticipation. <laughs> yeah. What's he going to say to me? The date is better. The date's better. Are you way too excited about that? I, I love it. It's my favorite thing to do. <laughs> when we're somewhere else it's and, and it's not English, I'm like, bro, Google Translate game. And Let's it's funny. Go. Like bad, bad Spanish or bad English is funnier. You can say things that you wouldn't know. Like, you can say really simple sentences. It just gets elaborate. It's funny. Yeah. You don't it's feel a, like it's, it's a, a little game. harder to make that connection? No, 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 no. no, no, no. no. It, it nope. triples the connection yep. because you're doing it together. Yep. Oh, my gosh. Yep. You all are too funny. I it's can't even. How does she oh not get this? Gosh. I don't get it. Because I'm a woman. I sit with two guys. When are you, men when, and women are When are you going to be more present than when you were like making like, and it's like the laughing in the back. Dude, I'm telling you, it's bad. Because body language is I wish I could do it with girls in Miami. You're like everyone can read body yeah. language. No, I hear your point. And that I is do. a large part of what women are, are pinging off of a dude. The body language, yeah. Is his body language, right? Mm -hmm. if, is, yeah. he, is he nervous? Right. Is he, is he confident? Is he stoic? What is, what's his eye contact right. like? 
Right. Like all, she's understanding all these right. sub communications. And it's mischievous. Yeah. You have to understand that. It's like being a, a teenager like again. Mystery you're, about yeah, it. you're in this group setting. It's like a yes or no note. And so everybody's having a conversation around the table, and you and her are like, and it's like y'all's little <laughs> secret under the table. Justin, you're having way too much oh, fun bro, with this. Oh, bro, you man. should see me do it. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe incredible. I'll tag along, yeah. and I'll yeah. just watch this unfold. Okay, Sterling, I want to get to uh, Deli. We're gonna come to you in a couple of minutes. Y'all having too much the fun. Secrets, Justin. Yeah, <laughs> we should be charging for this. We oh <laughs> man, Sterling, I want to get to a couple of you, one of your tweets, and then one that corresponds oh, this, with it. Um, Deli. Fun. You see a number seven? Do you see the two tweets that you see uh, Sterling on the two bunnies? You see that one first? Can we put that uh, up, please? You all remember? I know something? this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Tiny Rabbit is obsessed with giant girlfriend who's four times his size. Now, I saw this, laughed out loud. I think, don't know if you're I guess what I tweeted, Justin. I'm just in, in your own head. Okay. The tweet says, can we go back up to his tweet? It says... Oh, wait, there was another one before that. Oh, did I maybe pull the wrong one? Yeah, because I quote tweeted that. You quote tweeted it. That might have been why. Is it? Did you say women like giant angry elephants and men like mouse or something? Is that no, what no, I'm I said, that from? I said, you can bring, bring the tweet up again. I'll just repeat back what I tweeted. I said, this is literally every left-leaning couple oh, that's I've right. ever met. That's right. Giant woman, tiny man. That basically describes every liberal couple I know. Yeah. And then I found this one. Deli, pull this up with the legs. You see that one? <laughs> Telly's laughing, so that's a good sign. Okay, me, my boyfriend. <laughs> She's on the left, and we laugh, okay? Now, this is, this is a comment we can have about obesity being what it is, and we know obesity. I know we could talk about the dad bods all day, but obesity is being glorified among women now. You see the magazine saying fat is healthy. You see these, some call them whales. I'm not going to say that, it's but dangerous. these giant yep. women, it's dangerous, it's unhealthy, huh. and you see that happening. Um, but it's also, to me, a statement on, I see it, like I said, that scene at the grocery store, I see a lot of these women who, I, I, I see the couples, and I literally say to myself, sometimes I'll turn to my husband and I'll be like, how, how do they have sex? She is massive. <laughs> she looks like, she's like, Rawr, you know, she's masculine. She's like, come on over here, babe. She's got the deep voice. It sounds like she's got more testosterone. And he's like, okay, honey, he's all bony. You know, I mean, it, it, this is... Walk around a mall and look around. You're seeing this dynamic. We're joking about it, but you're seeing this more and more. Why, like, what's happening to men? Like, even just the physical nature. I know we talk about, have you ever talked about, like, shrinking testosterone levels? Oh, yeah, I talk, I talk about that. A lot. Why do you think that's happening? Because that is a, that's I, a... I can give you a master class on why that's happening. So men's, men's testosterone levels have declined year on year for, like, the last 50 years mm -hmm. at least. Um, so in some context, the average... 30-year-old guy today would have the same testosterone levels as a guy who was 60 years old in 1950. Mm -hmm. That's scary. a good comparison. That's scary. That's ridiculous. Because your, 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 your testosterone naturally declines with age. That's a natural thing. But for you know, your 60-year-old, say, ancestor to have t the same amount of testosterone you do at half of his age is ridiculous. The reason that's happening is a whole bunch of reasons why that's happening. The quality of our food, uh, the the uh, um, demonization of uh, cholesterol mm -hmm. has a giant part to play oh, in yeah, that. By because, big pharma. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right, because cholesterol is like the primary building block of the testosterone molecule. You need cholesterol to build that, right? You do produce some naturally, but you need to ingest some dietarily. We've got that going on. We've got the advent of uh, BPAs and plastics drinking and eating and touching a lot of these materials which leach through our skin, get into our bodies and act as estrogen mimicking compounds we've got the ingestion of lots of phytoestrogens in our diet we've also got the massive influence of estradiol from the birth control pill which leaks into the water table and does not get filtered out mm -hmm. through municipal water supplies and you th this the all this is anyone who's questioning what i'm saying here uh, read the book esterogeneration by anthony j he outlines every single study that has been done on all of this stuff and Water, water tables, municipal water tables are tested for estradiol. They come back positive. Mm -hmm. So we're literally ingesting, as men, we're literally ingesting like, like synthetic estrogen, mm -hmm. which binds to the same receptors as our testosterone does and lowers our overall T levels. Like this is a consistent bombardment that men have been facing, year, and it's getting worse year on year on year. Mm -hmm. That's why I made us drink out of that, like, that carbon water filled thing. Yeah. yeah, I filtered the water in my house. And by the way, 
so what Sterling is talking about is 100% true. Um, as someone who like this is what this is my baby, health and wellness. This is all I talk about. Nice. Like what at my home life, this is my priority for my family to make sure we're all as healthy as possible. But what he's talking about, audience is also pivotal for women because we also have a fertility crisis in this country when it comes mm -hmm. to women and all those chemical exposures you're talking about and all those chemical sensitivities and antibiotics that filter through the water supply and all of that stuff it affects women in a different way but it's it also scary. is affecting it's very very scary and when you go to be healthy it's funny we have a, a partner on here 360 cookware that i brought in because i did a lot of research on pots and pans and how much you, you go to make a health, healthy dinner for your family you put it in a pan that leaches chemicals into your food supply, and you don't realize just the depth of all this stuff. You talked about cholesterol, which is interesting, which ties me a little bit into the matrix topics. Do you believe that, I don't know how plugged in you guys are to matrix stuff. I have one matrix topic at the end of the show I want to do with you, but do you? how much of this do you believe is intentional? Do you believe that the powers that be want a sicker, less self-sufficient, more dependent society? Or do you believe it's accidental and just a product of industrialization? Like, what, what do you think is really going on here, in your mm. view? I can, I can share what I believe as well, but do you, you know, what do I you used, think? I used to think it was just a product of industrialization and, like, oversight and, like, ignorance. And the older I get, the more tinfoil hat I get, and the more I'm like, this is deliberate. Like, mm -hmm. this, like, because like, so many things consistently have been mm -hmm. going against men being masculine. Like uh -huh. you look at the education system, you look at social media, you look at, like we just said, all, all food and, and constant chemical exposure, like everything. You couldn't have engineered something better if you tried right. to try and make men less masculine. Mm -hmm. So at a certain point, I look at all that and I'm like, it's just too much of a coincidence for me to be like, oh yeah, it was accident. Whoops, yeah. it'll happen like this magically, you know? Yeah, I mean, I always say my phrase here is the destruction is intentional because I really believe if you look at the Eat Bugs campaign, if you look at what they're doing to farmers, yeah. the demonization of meat, the demonization of all of these things, you talked about cholesterol, there's a billion upon billion upon billion dollar industry of pharma drugs, of, of pharmaceutical companies that make a ton of money off you cholesterol don't, you medication. Don't make, you, don't, you can't make money if people are healthy. You can't. You can't. You have, like, people need to be sick and unhealthy for you to make money off of them. That's right. That's the, that's the, that's simple. Like, and you can't control people either unless no. they're unhealthy because unhealthy people become scared. And I think we've all seen that the last couple of years, the fear that overtook the population and what they were and weren't willing to do and mandates and the success of those things as a result of a terrified population. So if you look at it like that, for me, it's all connected. It's like there's there are people who have incentive, financial and otherwise, to have a population that where masculine men are increasingly less masculine, think their masculinity is a problem, think it's toxic, you have shrinking testosterone levels, you have guys that are sitting in front of video games all day long instead of getting out there, getting into the gym, doing what, you know, what will build them up. And you have just an onslaught on health, on family, on we talked about the nuclear family. You do all of this to people, and what are you going to wind up with? A dependent, scared population that's willing to follow whatever Bill Gates tells them they're going to do next. So that's my angle on all of that. Um, I want to ask you about, where do I want to go? Let's check in with the chat before they kill me. And then I want to do an update in the, in the Tate case. I have a video I want to show and talk about uh, that was released on Twitter. And um, then we're going to get to Sterling's sex tips, because I, I need to know what he's telling guys. Oh, great. Oh, great. yeah. Delhi. Finally. So <laughs> we only got one super chat. Cool. It's for $100 from Rick Armstead. He said, Angie. Andrew Tate is the modern To Kill a Mockingbird, a black man falsely accused of a crime and railroaded by the leftists. Yeah, we're going to talk about that. Actually, let's get to that now because that's, uh, that's an interesting transition. So we have a video. Uh, do you see number eight? Um, this was, this came out. This is, I believe this might have even been from Sterling's account that you might have retweeted this. Do you see that, Deli? Okay, yep. let's play that. I would like to start by saying that there are no victims in this case. It all started April last year in 2022 when two girls that lived in my home with me locked themselves in their room and claimed to be held their hostage. But here is the fact. When the authorities and the police broke into their room, raided our homes, they forgot to mention something really important. And that's that the kitty was in their room on their bed. Now, I don't think it's just the victims lying anymore, it's the police as well. There is a reason why they don't want to put that certain detail in the files. 
and it's pretty obvious. This is all about some election in 2024 and the vacant spot for the DECOT leadership that the prosecutor wants. The police know that there was no crime and they are holding the Tate brothers locked with no evidence because they think it's good for Romanian politics. Now, the other two victims that the police claim to be involved in this case are me and Beatrice. And we have been given three statements so far, clearly saying we are not victims and we have never worked with or for Andrew and Tristan Tate in any way, but our statements keep getting thrown away. The police don't care about the truth. They don't listen to neither me nor Beatrice. Instead, they choose to listen to two girls that went on a luxurious vacation on the French Riviera a week or two after being rescued for whatever they claimed to be. Another fact is that the police threw away the surveillance footage from the house, inside the house and outside the house, because they don't, don't consider it evidence. Evidence that proves that those girls were able and were going for walks, they were going out of the house with their phones whenever they wanted, wherever they wanted. Okay. We want Jelly justice, Mark. they want police. So this is one of many videos that I've seen that have raised alarm for me as to how the case is being treated. Obviously, I'm not privy to any inside information here, but I've seen now them come out repeatedly, these two girls, and say, we're repeatedly being called victims. We're saying we're not victims. I want to know, my question is, why are these girls' statements not being taken accurately from their own mouths? Why are they not in the case files? Why is this stuff not being recorded? I saw a video we covered here with Georgiana and Luana who were saying, I hope I'm saying their names right. If I'm not, I apologize. But they put out a video where they showcased that a lot of, two of these women who were making accusations, one was saying she was being held in captivity. There's video of her scrolling on her phone, saying, how could she be held in captivity? If you've got access to a cell phone, it doesn't make any sense. Another girl was seen. She made accusations of sexual assault. Three weeks later, she's twerking half naked, had a party in the house. That just seems like odd behavior for me, for someone who's making such an accusation as a female and sitting here like, this is just not how it would play out. This doesn't make any sense to me. So I'm curious to ask you both. Do you believe, you know, obviously I don't, we're not, and none of us are privy to inside information with respect to what's going on behind closed doors over there, but this sound is, is sounding to me like it's more and more political what's going on here. Do you guys want to share an opinion about that? I, mean, I think she summed it up pretty well. Like it's about, to, like the pieces have finally come together where it's like, okay, here's the clear motive of why they're doing this to Andrew and Tristan. And it's about this, this uh, dicot. Uh, leadership position that's coming up for election. So mm -hmm. they, they're trying to make, these guys are trying to make themselves look big on an international stage to get this job, basically. Mm -hmm. and, they, and they all know, like, they all know it's a stitch up job. The evidence is falling flat everywhere you look. It's just, mm -hmm. it's ridiculous. That's why they, that's why they, and they're, because as my understanding, because of the way the Romanian justice system works, they're allowed to keep detaining them for an extended period of time. And their lawyer wasn't allowed to like look over the uh, prosecution's case time. files, stuff That's like this. Right. It's just it's it's so clearly a stitch up job. But regard, like, does it concern you regardless as to how this is going to end? If there's this level of corrupt, it seems to be there are layers deep of corruption here. From what I can see, my naked eye, I'm just like this. This is not adding up for me. Is there I concern? Mean, yeah. If you look at what these brothers have done for the country of Romania, like they they literally they put Romania on the on the map internationally. Mm -hmm. They've rescued. People don't know half this stuff. They they rescued so many uh, like street dogs. They have like a foundation for rescuing street dogs. They built an orphanage in Romania. People don't know that either. They donated constantly to the Romanian Orthodox Church. Mm -hmm. They've done so much for the country of Romania, and to and then to see this happen to them, it's just heartbreaking. Justin, you have any thoughts on? My concern was never whether they're innocent or not. Yeah. My concern has always been whether it's going to be fair. And I think that's the biggest thing. It's absolutely political. Mm -hmm. and, and my concern is zero about whether they're innocent. I, I have no doubt about that. Mm -hmm. It's whether they're going to get set up. Mm -hmm. That is my only concern. Some people so. have written in to me, and um, there's been concern by people who support the Tate's message, who support the war room, who support hustlers, who have been positively affected by the Tate's in their life, Andrew in particular, whether it was you know motivation to get in the gym, motivation to improve their lives. And they'll say to me, well, what happens to the movement if they don't get out? You know, Worst case scenario in these people's minds is they feel like the person at the top who really makes sure that all of this stuff funnels through um, and gets to them, if that person vanishes, the whole movement will be a discreditor or be vanished. Can you offer some sense that 
that won't happen for those who really feel that you know the war room and hustlers and all that has had a positive impact on their lives. They're looking at this saying, well, is, does it just all go away without Tate? And they're also saying, by the way, is that the motivation? Are they trying to get this guy because you get the guy at the top and you're able to then discredit and dismantle an entire movement behind him? Is that possible? Can you offer any reassurance? Any thoughts on that? I don't think Tate's message is going anywhere. He, he, he literally has an entire, like the, what do you call them, Zoomers? Mm -hmm. Like the whole Zoomer generation of boys mm -hmm. are, f are basically fans of Andrew Tate. You think they're going to stop preaching his message? He's already convinced them that they need to be in shape, making money, hustling, mm -hmm. building their life, like putting themselves through trials. He's already convinced an entire generation of young men that this is the way forward. Mm -hmm. You think they're going to suddenly discard that message? Mm -hmm. Just because, you know, if, if Andrew's detained for a longer period of time? I don't think so. I think it'll pour gasoline on a fire. Yep. Honestly. Make him uh, a martyr. You've, yeah. just, you've just made it. Yeah. You've already made him a martyr, basically. And he said it himself, you could take me, but you can't kill an idea. Mm -hmm. And so I completely think that it's already done. So mm -hmm. holding Andrew is not going to stop it. Mm hmm yeah, there's been effort to try to convey by some who don't like him that his, his following's not organic. You know, they try to make it that, you know, the affiliate marketing and Vice tried to do this as well to say, oh, it's just affiliate marketing. You know, these people are just bots. His organic following, some will say, is actually quite small. That's not what I've seen at all. That's not, I mean, I don't see how anybody could make that statement. I mean, at this point, it's like the guy, you know, goes to the bathroom and people want to talk about it. I mean, he just is that guy. One thing that I, I will say is that I agree with you that it will pour gasoline on the fire. I think it'll make a lot of people very angry. Um, I also think the movement could potentially get much even stronger because people are going to be like, oh my God, how dare you? You know, this person did X, Y, and Z for my life. Now I'm going to be even more motivated to stand up. The thing about Andrew, though, is I think Andrew is unique in that he is incredibly charismatic as a person. I think that goes without saying. And he's done something unique that I haven't seen a lot of people do, which is that he talks about, and Sterling, you do this a little bit as well, to your credit, um, and Justin a little bit, less with the political stuff, but he, he gets political. Like, he's taken on Greta Thunberg. You know, I, it was no surprise to me, the timing of all of this, to be honest with you, because he was front and center going against the left's baby. He's somebody who will talk about COVID, he'll talk about, you know, he'll in the same breath tell you to get to the gym and get your life together and be like, oh, by the way, the Matrix is trying to take your freedom and here's what the World Economic Forum is doing. That is not easy to find in a human, and I think a lot of people have been drawn to him like that. Um, so my hope is, this isn't even a question, but just that more people within the movement are unafraid to tackle even the political end of this, because it's getting very dirty. I mean, this World Economic Forum, we're going to play a video here. I touch it all the time. It's filthy dirty, what's going on. You're political. We talked to you, you said you were conservative at one point. Yeah, I know yeah, that. Yeah. But you got to be willing. It's not easy, because people think, oh, if I get political, I'm going to you know, divide my audience, or I'm going to, but this stuff is nasty, this Klaus Schwab. I mean, these people are bad people. Yep. So that's my hope, is that I see more. I, whenever any of you all get political, I'm like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I get excited. I'm not going to lie. I'm not going to lie. Deli, I'm going to check in with you, and then I want to, um, I'm going to force force these guys to get political for a second. Uh-oh. They're like, I'm leaving. You don't need to force me. I'm yeah, getting out. It's, it's Justin's like, a, peace out. It's yo. not a problem. It's not a problem. <laughs> Deli, we got some? Uh, no, not yet. Oh, no. Okay, good. I thought you flagged me. Okay, cool. So let's go to, um, I'm going to go to Disclose TV. Do you see that end one that I pulled, Deli? Yeah. I okay. Got We're going to play this video. This is coming from the World Economic Forum. You know they're all in Davos right now. This is Tony Blair, former prime minister. And uh, he's talking about some stuff that's gone on in the last two years, which I would like to address with you guys, because I think that we've never seen more of a void of masculine men than we saw in the last two years. Let's take a look. Let's play it, Deli. You need to know who's been vaccinated and who hasn't been. Some of the vaccines that will come on down the line will be multiple. There'll be multiple shots. So you've got to have, for, for reasons to do with the healthcare more generally, but certainly for a, a pandemic or for um, for, for vaccines, you've got to have a proper digital infrastructure, and many countries don't have that. In fact, most countries don't have that. Okay. You need to know. So I'm not going to talk that. about. We're not getting into the details of vaccine efficacy and all that. I'm going to leave that for another space and another time. What I want to talk to you about is what he's talking about: digital infrastructure. I've heard you talk about this. These people are trying like hell to impose something digital as a means to control the population. We look over the last two years and we've, saw, we've seen that when people are scared, they will comply. 
with any number of things. They, there are too many members of the population that don't, they don't care about the data. They got terrified. It was like, oh, here, here's my arm. What is it? What's in it? Who cares? Blah, blah, blah. You know, it was, oh, a mask, six masks. Oh, let me just, there was no questioning of anything. Do you think that, based on what we've seen from compliance level in the population, when you hear efforts like this, does it concern you that people will just line up and be like, oh, digital? Oh, cool. Sounds like they're going to take care of me. Here's my name. Here's my info. Does that worry you at all? Sterling, I'll start with you. Well, it should worry the people who are going to line up for it because you're going to willingly sign up for your own enslavement. Like this, the, the, the end game of all this, so what's going to come next? We're going to go through like uh, central bank digital currencies. Mm -hmm. They're going to be rolled out. And what does that mean? Okay, that's going to be t that's going to be then linked to your social credit score system. It's going to be linked to your vax status. It's going to be linked to all. It's going to be linked to your social media accounts. Oh, you said this thing about the government, which we don't like. Okay, now you can't buy food with your money because it's digital and we control it. Oh, and by the way, you also can't save with it because it's got an expiry date of like sixty days. They've actually done this. They've rolled an example of this out with the Chinese one. Mm -hmm. So it's the ultimate form of control for all these people. So. I'm not concerned about it because I've got a backup plan. I'm get, I, I know, I'm intending to avoid all this stuff. Mm -hmm. But the average person who isn't aware of how dangerous this is, they sh they're the ones who aren't paying attention. They're the ones who really should be scared because they're the ones who are going to get taken control of. So, Justin, this brings me back to what you say to guys about giving advice about being financially independent and all of that. Because it seems to me that the people who are not going to have a backup plan are going to be people who work for a woke company or they're tied to that company, a mandate comes down the pike, they've got to put food on the table for their family. So if you could just speak a little bit to why, given that we're seeing this stuff roll out, now is a time more than ever where people need to figure out how to not have to be part of the system to support the people that they love in their life. Guys, I'm talking to men. Yeah, so <clears throat> I think that it's going to stop people from traveling. I think that's one yeah. of the main things that's going to stop. Uh, I think that you are going to have the ability to go online and make money, and I think that's going to be very, very, very important. But as you can see from Andrew, they're shooting down websites. They're taking down servers. They'll take your email down. They'll take down everything. Your bank account. So to me, the more layers that you have in your arsenal to protect yourself from what's coming, I think the better. Do you, what does that look like? When you say, like, I'm not asking you specifically what your backup plan is, but I've noticed that a lot of guys that know what's up, they'll like have multiple passports. They'll have yeah. like, what, what does this look like? They might have a like? property somewhere else. They might, okay. they might have, they bought land somewhere. They might make a deal with another country. They might get a, they might get a family somewhere else mm. so they can get citizenship. There's okay. a lot of things that you can do particularly to get away from the West, mm -hmm. particularly, um, that I think guys are doing. I don't think it's any new information. I don't think I'm saying anything groundbreaking. Young men are doing it. They are waking up. They are talking to one another online about how to set themselves up to not be trapped in what Andrew might call the matrix. The matrix. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, that is quickly labeled as a conspiracy theory all the time, the matrix. And then I always say, like, have you all been asleep for the last two years? Because yep. when did you, if you had gone back 20 years and said, that we would be talking about needing to show a car that you got an experiment, experimental injection to get into a restaurant, people would have been like, you're nuts. And look what we just lived through. I left New York City because I couldn't go anywhere because I didn't get the vaccine. I, couldn't, I wasn't allowed anywhere. I was like, screw you. you know, my husband was like, we're out. You know, but people, not everybody could do that. People were like, I, I can't. You know, I don't have that financial security. Well, the only I reason, the job. only reason, the only, and Andrew's talked about this, the only reason that they couldn't is because not enough men stood up and said, this is bullshit. So talk about that for me a little bit. What should it have looked like the last two years? Well, I'll tell you exactly what I did. Yeah. The moment, so I was, I was living in Los Angeles when all this COVID stuff happened, right? And within about, I'll, I'll be honest, I actually bought the lie to start with. It was about a week after that, Los Angeles is full of homeless people. It's full of crackheads. And I was walking around the neighborhood and I looked at this, you know, overpass, bunch of homeless tents, and I thought, hang on a minute, the crackhead isn't dead. <laughs> Surely I have a stronger immune system right. than the crackhead. Right. So that, and Skid Row isn't a walking graveyard. Mm -hmm. That should have been the first, like, big right. clue for everybody. So I'm like, this doesn't quite add up. So what mm -hmm. I did is I, 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 I went from LA, I said, screw this, I'm not staying in California. I went to England, and then I was supposed to quarantine in England. I didn't quarantine in England. And me and my best friend there, we drove out through the English Channel, and we just kept bouncing through Europe. And every country we went to, we would w be the only ones walking around without a mask on. The police would come over to us. We'd play the dumb English tourist game where we just pretend we can't understand what they're saying. 
and then they'd just shuffle us along because we were too much we were too much pain in the ass. Mm-hmm. And you just we just kept being a pain in the ass mm-hmm. to any authority figure until they caved in. And that's and we didn't comply. We just kept doing that. And if enough men just didn't comply with the bullshit, we wouldn't be in this situation. All it takes is for a few and this is part of the reason why they don't like Andrew is all it takes is a few men to stand up and say, this is crap, right. united, together. Mm-hmm. That's all it takes. Yeah, he was even saying that. There was a video we showed where he was like, my brother and I were out in the club. We were doing this. Yeah. We were doing that. So there were men that didn't follow, you know, the nonsense. But there were a lot that did. I yeah. mean, I, I, I have to say, I knew men in my life who I had worked with in the past, who I always considered strong, able-bodied, you know, you would look at them and you'd be like, at the time I would say, oh, if you know, the, the Walking Dead came, he'd be on my list, we'd call him, we would right. join up. Zombie Apocalypse team. Right, yeah. Zombie Apocalypse yeah, yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. My Zombie Apocalypse team has changed after what I've seen the last two years. I saw some men crumble. I mean, terrified of COVID, beyond belief, terrified of everything. Went, got vaccinated, got their kids vaccinated. I was like, they lost their minds. So that, that kind of connected to everything else I was talking about because I was like, well, wait a minute. What has happened to men in particular? Because I can understand women are led by emotion. I had my nervous breakdown, right? My husband was fine. He was like, calm down, babe. You know, I had that moment. I anticipate that many women would go through that. But men, bro- this broke men that it shouldn't have broken. So what about that? You know, what do we do now? Because that's not just a get to the gym. That, that, there's something deep going on with guys that their spirit gets so easily. Like, we needed a society of male warriors when that hit to be like, no, I'm not going to shut my business down. No, I'm not going ha- to do that. You know, I'm not going to put a mask on my child. No, I'm. Where were they? Did you see them where you were when you were traveling? Did you, did you see? Nope. Did you see them? Other than yourselves and your circle, did you see guys that were like, I'll tell, no? you, where, I'll tell you where you can find them. Where? The war room. That's where. So those That's guys. That's literally it. That's okay. where you'll find them. And that was one of the biggest things that I think we've had this conversation in the past. When, when we first met, when I joined the war room, whatever, and I thought, oh, this is where everybody is. <laughs> right. I thought I was insane. You, you begin to think no, you're no, insane no. for a little bit. Like, yeah. I was, yeah. Me and my best friend, he's not in the war room, but me and my best friend were traveling around and we, kept, we couldn't find people like us. We'd, occasionally we'd find one guy here, one guy there. I'm like, are we the only ones that are, that are sane on the mm. planet now? And then I joined the war room and I'm like, this is where everybody is. That's where everybody and, is. That's oh. the, and that's the problem is that men are isolated. Men mm. are isolated about, around a bunch of people that are sheep. And I think one thing that would fix it is Andrew's message, is the war room, is bringing men together. Another thing that I think would fix it is if there was a platform that people could go on that that couldn't be wrecked, that you could just tell full truth on. You know, Mm -hmm. I was super excited about Elon getting Twitter. Mm -hmm. I was super excited about Andrew getting back on Twitter. So it's it's the fact that men are often isolated and. We say this when, when me and you do events, is that guilt is the number one thing used against men. Guilt and in what way? Guilt, like they make men feel guilty for being men. Right. Or they make mm-hmm. men feel guilty for being too masculine. Now all of a sudden it's bad to be masculine because anything that masculine is toxic. So standing up and running your business either, in, anyway is not okay. You know, mm-hmm. having a gun, protecting yourself, all these things you can go to jail for now. You know, it, it's just, it's, it's a bunch of men that have been isolated and now they feel like they have no choice because they have no kind of bond and connection. Nobody's got their back anymore. It's just mm-hmm. them against a bunch of people that are going to prosecute them for being a man. And that goes back to the point about breaking apart the family unit, yep. keeping everyone separate. If everyone's separate, they're much easier to control. Mm-hmm. They're much easier to influence. Yep. A man on his own is scared to stand up and act out against the powers that be. But a group of men banded together, a family, heaven forbid, a pair of brothers maybe, mm-hmm. right, or a father and his kids... Well, then you've got some structure. Then, then they're more powerful. They're yeah. not afraid to stand up against all that. Yeah, stuff. it's amazing what's happened in the last 30 years if you really look at like the breakdown of just community. When you think about how you know how much is outsourced now, I always talk about you know I don't have childcare for my child. Like I'm, I'm it. Like I'm very funny about leaving him with anyone that's not my husband, my mom, my dad, family. Um, 
for many reasons, because I don't know s- these strangers. Like, what, I, they're strangers at the end of the day, and I'm not going to, you know, put them in daycare and stuff like that. Now, I'm fortunate I'm able to make that decision, but I always tell people, be really careful, because you don't know then who's informing your kid's view of the world. You know, that's all indoctrination happening at the school level. But I always say, if you, if you look back in time, people say, well, how was everyone able to do it? Well, families lived together. Communities existed. It wasn't this... You know, a lot of time there weren't two people working in a home, so it wasn't so what there wasn't that panic that would set in of who's going to be with the baby. So it's a lot of a lot of things have gone down um, with respect to that. I want to get to a lighter topic to close with, which is sex advice. You let's, know, do it. let's do it. Good? So listen, there are, there what are, are you guys having out trouble there. with? Listen, well, I'm good. <laughs> I am 100 percent good. I get. I'm um, glad to hear that. Yes, I'm I'm doing good. Um, but you do give advice to guys who. Not just about sex, about dating relationships, all that. But first of all, I want to hear, what do guys most often ask you for help with? Hmm. Like, what component of that? It depends how old they are. Okay. So with younger guys, I get a lot of dudes who have trouble with performance anxiety or erectile dysfunction. Hmm. I mean, it's primarily performance anxiety. I can Is that related to pornography? Very much so, yeah. Okay. So, that, oh, uh, so in that regard, you have an epidemic of younger guys who are habitual porn users mm. and that completely screws up their dopamine receptors and the way they associate like ver- novelty and pleasure yeah and so they're not able to get excited around a woman anymore or as excited as they should to do the deed is so it weird for you to give advice on that given your past being an adult film star a former adult no, film star no no you no, don't no, feel no, there's no. a conflict there at all not for at you all. to say okay no, so I, I feel there's no I, I don't I don't see a conflict people ask me this all the time yeah. and I'm glad you asked that I, the way I look at it is like okay some people can can consume this product and it doesn't screw them over. The same way some people can can drink alcohol and they have no problem. But mm-hmm. other guy over here, you give him a bottle and he's under the bridge. He has a problem with alcohol. Right. So he should probably go to AA. He should probably quit that stuff, right? Because it's screwing up his life. Okay. Look at the consequences. Look at the ramifications of this habit. Is it, with porn example, right? Are you not hitting the gym as much because you're jerking off all the time? Are you having terrible sleep? Are your T levels plummeting? Are your relationships with women shitty? Is your sex life screwed up? Like, the fir- if a guy comes to me and he says he has any problems in the bedroom, the first thing I tell him to do is stop watching porn. Mm-hmm. Do that to start with, and then we'll see what happens. Okay. That might be all you need to do. If not, we move on, we find other solutions, right? Um, with older guys, what I find is it's actually like a, a they, cut, they don't, the number one problem they come to me with is lasting longer mm. with older dudes, because older dudes didn't grow up with pornography. Older dudes didn't grow up with an, with an iPhone or a smartphone or whatever. Got and, it. And, um, or Pornhub and X videos and stuff all over their phone. So they ain't got that problem. Their problem is they never learnt to control their body and understand, you know, the relationship, like having a balanced pelvic floor or understanding how to control themselves or understanding like the point of no return. And I've never heard a man talk about a guy's pelvic floor. That's so important. They talk about it with women all the time because we have babies and then we go to PT for it and all that stuff. But I've never heard that. That's so important to talk about a guy's pelvic floor. That's, that's fascinating to me that yeah, you well, the address number, the, that. The main reason that guys w- can't last as long as they want to is because they have an imbalance in their pelvic floor. Interesting. Yeah. Wow. Because the, when, a, when a dude ejaculates, it's a contraction of the muscles down wow. there. So wow. their muscles are t- typically, if a guy can't last very long, his muscles are too tight down there. Mm. And he, or at least one half of them are. So he needs to balance that out and then he can last a long What do you say to guys who just can't, they can't, they can't get laid. Like they can't, they want to have sex. They're, it's not happening for them. There's so many sexless men and that's just not healthy. What do you, what's the advice to kind of, what are they doing wrong? They're doing a lot of stuff wrong. I mean, they need to get their sigils in order, like we might say in the war room. They need to get, get their health sorted out, get their, get their finances sorted. And miraculously, if you, get, if, you, if you start making more money, you start hitting the gym looking good, you might start feeling a bit more confident. You might start walking around with a bit more swag and a bit mm. more self-esteem. Okay, that is contagious. Women can smell that That's on a true. man. Right? It's undeniable. You can't fake that. Mm-hmm. Okay? So, okay, you're, you're a bit depressed, you're not getting laid. All right. Hit, first thing first, hit the gym, start feeling better about yourself. Mm-hmm. All right, now let's figure out how you can start making some more money so you can start living a bit, bit more of a f- freer life than you previously were. You can, st- again, mm-hmm. start improving your own self-esteem and self-worth. Okay, now let's start working on like your general social skills. Like, are you a loner? Are you just hanging out by yourself all the time? Do you have a band of brothers who keep you accountable, who make you be social, who you can talk about your 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 worries and your ideas and your worldviews with bounce just generally learn to be a more social human being mm-hmm. 
being a social person is a skill. And I said this about sex. Sex is a skill, just like anything else. These are all learnable skills. No one, no one is like born amazing in bed, right? Mm. It's, it's, something, it's a skill set they developed through experience. And the same with social skills. You've got to develop that through experience. There's a, there's a reason this man is incredibly charming. It's because since he's been a little kid, he's been, he's been the guy smooth talking all the ladies. Like, that's why <gasps> you're incredibly true, charming. Is that true, Justin? Is that true? I was pretty good at a young age, yeah. So you never had a period because you know what was really funny? I was going to bring it. Last time you and I sat down together, you were giving tips to guys about whatnot. I remember I got a message and one guy was like, oh, sure. You know, but he looks, Justin looks like Justin and Justin's got, I'm not going to be able to pull that off. I hate that excuse. I hate when I guys that. use That's... that as an excuse. Because I know, I have in my entire life, you cannot take this experience away from me. I've met so many dudes who are either, like, it's a great example. I met this, I knew this guy back in Perth. I'm from West Coast of Australia, right? Brazilian dude, face riddled with acne scars. Mm. I wasn't even aware that he had acne scars for the first couple of weeks of me knowing this guy because he was so charming you will see past somebody's physical appearance if they are charming enough if That's they have true. those social skills down and there are and again i know so many dudes who are fat mm -hmm. short who, ugly who crush it with ladies because they are ridiculously charming and they've also worked on these other parts that we talk about they're physically capable they know how to fight so they they because they know how to fight, they walk into a room with presence. They command that presence from somebody yeah. else, right? Or they've got their finances together so they can provide for, their, for a family and whoever comes in, into their life. They have these other pillars of their life they've got sorted out. So they're not... And I also know guys who are ridiculously good looking and super tall who have every other aspect of their life is in the gutter. Yep. Yeah. Because they, they, they spent their whole childhood relying on that one thing and it got them so far. It got them through, say, high school when they right. were like the, the, the top guy or whatever. And they leave high school and everything comes collapsing around them because they I'll, didn't work on anything else. I'll also say the scars for a guy, like you talk about acne scars or I remember like a guy when I was in college had like scars. Sometimes that stuff could be like attractive in a man. It's not, it's not necessary. Guys can see that as an obstacle, but it's different for men and women again. But I think sometimes a guy who's been through it you, you know, one of the advantages I think you in particular had when, when somebody said, oh, sure, Justin, I was like, this guy's been through it. We talked about your past. We talked about you did not have an easy upbringing. Yeah. So I think some of what women see in men, I always say like sturdiness, like the fact that you've been through struggle, you've overcome that struggle, the fact that you went through struggle and you came out on the other side and you are financially secure and you are someone who, you know, is a gentleman and all of that stuff. That's much more powerful than, you know, just the visual. Of course, you know, you're going to want a guy to, you're going to want to be attracted to them and hot for them. But part of what makes you hot for them is that, that like, that confidence that I can overcome because that makes women feel safe. And women really want to feel safe. Let me quick, so, give you a yeah. quick hypothetical scenario. Say, uh, let's say, take a, let's say a guy like Justin, you wear, you, you, we're about to go on a date with a guy who, and you've only seen him online where he's, okay, he's tall and he's handsome. I know that about him, right? Yeah. And then you get to the date and he is completely nothing like you would expect, yeah. right? He has no social skills whatsoever. He's super nervous. He's insecure, right? As a woman, I imagine, and tell me if I'm wrong, you would feel kind of in danger, like almost betr mm -hmm. betrayed and, and like this guy is not safe to be around. That's right. Because I had an expectation and that expectation was not met by mm -hmm. he, I expected him to be this super confident, charming, charismatic guy and he ain't. Right. And women, no, I've never seen women react worse to, to, to men in general than in that scenario when it says actually a good looking dude and he is not charming, women will reject that guy and get a, a way more visceral betrayal feeling over mm -hmm. them than if they just meet a, you know, a regular looking dude who's not very charming. Yeah. I agree. It's because they feel deceit. Mm -hmm. I always say that the, the gap, the, the formula for happiness is the gap between expectation and reality. Mm -hmm. And so when you're expecting him to act in the way that he looks and he doesn't, the woman feels betrayal and deceit from it like he tricked her. And she was wanting this thing based off of how he was projecting himself. And when he does not give that to her, that's when she gets angry. Mm. So 
I completely agree with that. The other thing is a woman, what's scary to women, you know, oftentimes we talk about stoicism in a man. I had this conversation also, this debate with Hunter Avalon the other day where he was saying, oh, you know, men shouldn't hold in their emotions and men should cry and all that. We got into a whole big discussion about that. But it's one thing, you know, a guy loses a family member and, you know, you want a human being next to you. You don't want a robot, I will say, as a female. But if a guy doesn't have control over his emotions, that's very scary yep. because that those are the guys that really fly off the handle. Those are the guys that develop severe anxiety. Those are the guys that get depressed easily. Like those are the those are the guys that are just an emotional roller coaster. And as women, sometimes just based on hormones, we can be a bit of an emotional roller coaster. I don't need an emotional roller coaster next to me. I need a guy who's together so that if I have a day where I need a cry, number one, I need a man who understands that I am a female and I need to cry and I want a big old bear hug and it's going to just be okay. I need someone who's going to make me feel okay about that. And number two, I want a man who's not crying with me. You can't be crying with me. I need you to be figuring out how to make it better and yeah. get the plan. So it's scary for women to see a man lose it because that means you can lose it in capacities that could be dangerous to us and we feel unsafe. Yep, shit hits so. the fan and he's sitting there crying in the corner. <laughs> yeah, like, bad. Okay, we're in, a, we're, we're in a house fire, we're in an earthquake and he... This guy is completely useless to yeah. you. Right? And as an example, it's funny, when we when COVID first struck, I'm very open with the audience that I lost my mind. I had just had a baby. He was four months old. I was listening to all the nonsense. I was like, this is my whole world right here. If anything happens to him, I'm, I was literally throwing myself on the floor in our Manhattan apartment. Like, I was, it was a full-blown Academy Award winning experience. My husband was just eating beef jerky. He was like, baby, it's going to be fine. Like, he got COVID. He was fine. And like, 10 minutes, you know, it was like a 10 minute illness. He was just like eating, you know, having a nice tall glass of water. It was like all fine. And he figured out a way to like seeing him be fine made me fine. You know, exactly. had I looked over and seen him throwing himself on the floor, You'd having have been a, worse. Oh, You'd have been worse. I would have been holy hell. I got I, this is not going to work. You know, this um, is why it's important for men to always act as if they have the answer. Mm -hmm. Even if as a guy, like even let's say you come to me with a problem. Even if in that moment, I don't know the exact answer to this problem. I don't know exactly how to solve that in this moment. I have enough faith in myself, mm -hmm. in my problem solving abilities that I will figure it out. So then I can tell you, it's okay, baby, I've got it handled. Mm -hmm. And maybe that's, if you look at it objectively, I'm kind of lying because I don't necessarily know how I'm going to fix it, but I have faith in myself that I will figure it out. Mm -hmm. So in a, it, you have to present that to your woman that you will solve her problems, or both of your problems, whenever they, when, whatever the world is going to throw at you, you have to have the resolve to sit there and be like, I will figure this out no matter what it takes. Don't y'all get stressed? Don't y'all guys? I mean, like, that's, that, being a, that's, that's, that's your burden man. of being a man. That's what you, that's that is being a man. <laughs> I get it, but like, <laughs> I get, you're saying it, but like, I would be like, oh, hell no. I'm not going to be able to do Like, don't y'all get like, I get it's your burden. Maybe it's just because I'm female. I can't relate to you this. Get but like, at how does it not, stress. how does it not get you where you're like, how do you, because there are men that it does get to, right? And your message to them is you've got to build yourself up. You've got to figure out a way for it not to get to you so you can be that support system for the woman next to you if, if that's what you want, a family and whatnot. But, like, how, is that just – how do you build that? Like, how do you tell a guy – I mean, that's just not just going to the gym. You've got to, like, dig deep for that. Is that that you have to struggle, that you have to go through obstacles, that you have to let it break you once and then the second time it doesn't break you? Is that how that works? Yeah. You gotta, yeah. you gotta constantly put yourself through the fire. Yeah. Put yourself through the fire yeah. until you don't get burned, or you get burned and you don't cry about put it. Put yourself in un. I like to say, be comfortable in the uncomfortable. Yeah, constantly put yourself in uncomfortable situations, mm -hmm. and that is what's gonna build up that stress tolerance. Y'all, I can't even. If I take a long drive, I gotta make sure I have three snacks in the car. My husband knows <laughs> it's like traveling with a small child. I, I just, I'm telling you, women and men are two <laughs> different species. All right, I want to close with a uh, question for you guys. Um, so I get a lot of I get a lot of love, I get a lot of hate. And of course, you know, the feminists call me a pick me. You've heard that expression like as yeah, if I don't get that. Yeah, what? it's basically <laughs> saying that like I'm I'm saying my commentary, I'm you know, elevating masculinity. I'm saying all this because I want to be liked by men. Uh, are they assuming that you don't believe what you say? They're assuming that I'm hungry for male attention. 
even though I'm married with a child, and by the way, lost two big paying television jobs because mm. I refused to tow the talking point of that organization. I'm like, y'all really think that I'm doing this now? Now I'm going to suddenly be saying what you want me to say? It's oh, ridiculous. And, and, and the woman who posts the trap pictures on Instagram isn't hungry not for male thirsty. attention. Oh, she's not hungry. Right. The but, women but sleeping you, around having who right. actually care about the, the world her son's yeah. going to grow up in, you're right. the one. Okay, I got right. it. Thank but you. that message What's goes the to... Damn question? I do you? Yes. <laughs> okay, this is the question. One thing that I, and we're going to wrap after this, the one thing that um, comes to me all the time is people will say, no matter what you say, the guys in the space, they're never going to defend you. It's a boys club, you know. You're, 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 the women who speak out, whether it's me, whether it's just pearly things, whether it's Ali Drummond, whoever it may be, the joke's on you. You know, they're never going to come out and speak out for you because it's a boys club, blah, 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 blah. What do you say to feminists who say that you guys don't really respect women like me. Your response to them, because I get this question a lot. I think they're what, ludicrous. What I say about her on the way? Yeah, yeah. I, I not me, but like you know, no, I'm not no, making but, this but personal. Let's choose you. Let's use you particularly. I respect you in every way. I think it takes a very, very, very strong woman to look at the world for what it is and not be emotional about it and call it like truth. And I think that's very rare amongst women. So for all the women that are standing up for what the truth is, that can look with their own eyes and make their own opinions for themselves are of the strongest women in the world. And for those women, I respect the most. So absolutely. So shout out to all the women out there just who I get messages from you and you say you're afraid to speak your mind, this, that, and the other thing. Just know that there are guys out there who do respect you and do appreciate yeah. what you're doing, and particularly when you're trying to... Save the world. Damn right. And guys like us need women like you speaking out online. Yeah. So if you're speaking out online, saying something, you know, particularly in regards to us yeah. or something like that, tag us and we'll repost it. We need you. I'm doing it for my baby boy. Everything yeah. I do is for my child. Literally everything that I do is for my child. And my kid's not going to grow up in a world where, you know, Klaus Schwab is making the decisions. I'll tell you that much. So I want to thank you both. I We just passed 100K like a week ago. It's a little celebration. I never do the show out here in this space. I wanted to have two people that the audience really knows and loves. You've only been on once, but I cannot tell you how many requests I've had to have you on. <laughs> so oh, the audience does love you. And we had Justin on. They were like, bring back Justin, bring back Waller. So I was like, okay, all right, y'all. So thank you so much for sharing this with me. I know you just passed 100K. I know you're over 100K. So um, thank you both for being here, for being honest, and um, keep doing what you do. So Likewise. audience, I love you. I'll see you soon. Bye.